the Board of Selectmen's meeting of Monday, December 17th with a pledge of allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Would we please stand, keep standing for a moment of silence for the victims of Newtown, Connecticut, please? Do you have one, Bruce, before I? Uh, okay, I have an announcement from the uh, People's First Food Pantry. they just like to let everybody know out there that their Adopt an Angel program will run for one more week. There's still ma many angels on the trees at uh, Unibank, Savers Bank, and Hannaford. These angels represent the wishes of the children and we ask for the Hannaford cards that will be given to our seniors to help during the holiday season. Please help make all of our children and seniors have a brighter Christmas by taking an angel. This, this program supports our children and seniors in need. The white angels at St. Mary's, Good Shepherd, and North Oxford Baptist Church, and the green angels at Hannaford, First Congregational Church, Savers, and Unibank support adopt an angel program. Pre please bring the angel with an unwrapped gift back to the location you took it by Wednesday 12-19-2012. Volunteers will be picking up these gifts at the end of the week, sorting them out and distributing to the presents to the families by 12-22. Uh, you might have noticed outside in the low wall in front of Town Hall is a new wreath, uh, holiday wreath out there this year. I want to thank the um, Evergreens Center of Milford. Came, came and dropped, dropped that up off to us last week. As, as usual, they did be beautiful work, so we appreciate it. Um, also, just for whatever business housekeeping here, uh, we have a couple, 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 couple of holiday weeks coming up. Next Monday, a week from tonight, the 24th, Christmas Eve Town Hall will be open 7.30 a.m. to 1.15 p.m. It's a half a day. We'll be closed on Christmas Day. Thursday and Friday, of, sorry, Wednesday and Thursday of that week, the 26th and 27th, Town Hall will be open normal business hours. On New Year's Eve, the 31st, um, Town Hall will be open from 7.30 until 3 p.m. It's closed on New Year's Day, and then we'll resume normal business hours on the 2nd. Thanks. Okay, um, just one announcement. If everyone's here for asphalt plant, we are not talking about the asphalt plant tonight. So, Citizens Forum, you've got two minutes. We're not here to discuss that tonight. Um, if everyone here, you should have been to the planning board or whatever, but I just want to let you know we're not going to sit here for an hour discussing the asphalt plant. But Citizens Forum, you're welcome to come up. You have two minutes. Just want to let you know. Citizens Forum. Okay, yep. Good evening. Um, my name is Jill Kenrick. I live at 156 Albee Road. <coughs> Uh, members of the Uxbridge Board of Selectmen, Mr. Hendricks, Uxbridge Town Manager, and residents of Uxbridge. I'm speaking here tonight at the Selectmen Citizens Forum section of this scheduled Selectmen's meeting because this is the last of any publicly scheduled Uxbridge Board meetings until after the holidays sometime after January 1st, 2013. On December 12th, 2012, the Uxbridge Planning Board began a public hearing for a special permit on a proposed asphalt facility known as Evergreen Development on 5.76 acres of land situated at 586 Quaker Highway. The Planning Board has continued this public hearing to January 9th, 2013. Also, on December 10th, 2012, the Uxbridge Board of Health 
under their posted new business section held a review of plans submitted referencing the Evergreen development. I am here tonight to request, no, to actually demand on behalf of many Uxbridge residents that under the authority and due diligence of the Uxbridge Board of Selectmen and the town manager, that they act tonight and in writing to postpone indefinitely any further continued public hearings of the planning board concerning the proposed asphalt manufacturing facility. I ask this to be done in order to prevent and or abate any and all future litigation against the town of Oxbridge and its residents should public hearings on this proposed proposal continue to alert and engage the officials of the State Attorney General's office and its municipal law unit and to, prevent adequate, and to provide adequate time to all residents to learn all aspects of this grievous error which has occurred. A fatal flaw has ruptured in the Oxbridge Charter in its Division II zoning bylaws. On June 19, 1995, at an Uxbridge Special Town meeting, by a two-thirds vote needed for passage, the Warren Article Number 5, prohibiting the batching, mixing, and manufacturing of bit bituminous asphalt in all zoning districts of the Town of Oxbridge, was passed. This prohibitive zoning bylaw its right subsequently allowed under the state's Home Rule Acts was the result following the long, difficult efforts and work of the town's Board of Health, the Board of Selectmen, and many concerned residents. Legal decisions were rendered on town rights under its then bylaws, and this pro prohibitation amendment was passed in 1995 to provide detailed, specific stipulations to prevent any further attempts to site such asphalt facilities or their machinery, structures, or buildings related to the manufacture thereof. Until the night of December 12, 2012, at the Uxbridge Planning Board's public hearing, Uxbridge residents were totally unaware that the asphalt manufacturing prohibited portions of its bylaw had been erroneously dropped or erased from the town zoning bylaws. In the year 2008, a town bylaw review committee under the auspices of the then Uxbridge Zoning Board of Appeal produced their final draft of the zoning bylaw recodification town of Uxbridge, March 2008. This 70-page document may have modernized and or simplified the numbering and codification of our zoning bylaws and it says that no substantive changes were made. While all of the other listed prohibited uses were correctly renumbered and recodified and placed into the use regulation table for a standardized pr approach to articulating z zoning use, this, pro prohi this prohibiting aspect was not included. <coughs> How could this particular historically important bylaw amendment been removed? How can any town official defend that this was not a substantive change that occurred during the recodification process? This is a serious legal matter which needs to be handled at the state level by Attorney General Martha Coakley's office. It's an affront to the residents of Oxbridge and it's not a situation to be only deliber deliberated, argued, and decided by and among the various town boards or town manager at this point. Do the right thing now. Postpone any further public hearings for any proposed asphalt facilities. Allow the time to take this issue to the proper state levels. This is a busy, family-celebrating holiday time, and not just the slow period for asphalt manufacturers to aspire to new facilities. Give the town and its residents a chance to fix this problem. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> yes, can I just, we need to let everyone know that the Board of Selectmen has no authority to postpone a public hearing caused by, called by the Planning Board. We don't have that authority. And as far as the, the recodification of the bylaws, um, 
I spoke at town meeting, urging people to vote against it, but it passed, approved by the Attorney General's office. And any comments made at town meeting about what the effect was going to be has no bearing. The only thing that matters is the actual words in the document. So the 2008 bylaws were adopted, uh, approved by the Attorney General's office with certain cautionary comments, but they stand. But as far as the relief that you are seeking from the board, that is beyond our authority. We cannot do it. It is beyond the authority of the town manager as well? Yes. yes. And you will... Um, Can I address... I would like to address... I can't speak yes. to... I can't speak to the publishing of the document during the, the codification uh, in 2008. However, if you consult <coughs> town meeting November of 2011, Article 10, amend the zoning bylaws. All right? The zoning bylaws changed this time last year. Manufacturing was added to a, a, a an allowable use in the industrial zone subject to the approval of the planning board and the definition of manufacturing was changed and asphalt or bituminous materials is no longer included in the zoning bylaws as a prohibited manufacturing use. I just want everyone to consult the current published documents use Go, go into Article 10 of our zoning bylaws and Appendix A, which is the zoning chart. I actually sent you an email, Jill, but I just got it out uh, 45 minutes before the meeting. So I, I wrote this all down. Just in order to go back to the planning board, again, this isn't a board that can help you here, but make sure you come that you are consulting the latest zoning bylaws because I think you're going to find that this particular use based on town meeting vote of a year ago is now allowable. Based it, on it, the, I'm telling, I'm telling you the current rules. So what you need to do, and I'm gonna e echo with the selectmen here, you need to start with the planning board and go, go from there. But under the current bylaws, it appears to be, and again, it's the planning board's decision, but it appears to be that it might be an allow allowable use in that zone. You're saying that last in, in last year, 2011, November 11, 2000 meeting. At a special town meeting, there was a warrant article. Not a special. It was the annual town meeting. It in was November. a warrant article specific to. It's also included in the zoning bylaws. Again, we can't adjudicate this here. I just wanted to give you some information tonight that maybe you don't have now. Okay, this, uh, this clearly isn't the forum where anything's going to happen tonight. We'd like something to happen. We want everyone to be satisfied here, but we also, I want to make sure you're operating under the latest version of the rules. So like them or not, that's the way they are now. And I believe that when the recodification process that was voted back in, my, um, in 2008 <coughs> and the continuing charter changes that were most recently voted at this last town meeting and which will be at the next annual town elections re voted on voted on by the, the people who vote who are going to the election and that the charter changes as well as the zoning bylaw changes were all part in parcel together and that um that's the in incorrect the, the zoning bylaw changes are just adopted at town meeting just as the passage that you read was adopted in 1995 at special town meeting by a two-thirds vote at town meeting a year ago the, those same zoning bylaws were changed by town meeting vote the town does not then turn around later and vote at the ballot the charter and the bylaws are two totally separate documents. The only thing the town will be voting upon at the ballot this spring is going to be the proposed revisions to the charter, which have nothing to do with the zoning bylaws. I'm not, I'm not prohibiting you from doing anything you want to do here. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to help you proceed procedurally so you've got all the information you need. 
No, right you, you're, you're twisting what I'm trying to say here. <coughs> and that is, is that there is a problem here that a important portion of the prohibited uses at the time when recodification began not public. Absolutely. you're absolutely correct was eliminated and then I will look at this about the planning board having made this change the whole aspect is, is that at town meeting the whole point though is that none of this was made people were not aware that the asphalt prohibition had been removed, and this does not specifically say asphalt manufacturing within it. So it, it again is also deceptively um, Actually, delinquent in what it has to do. Manufacturing it has specific prohibitions, and asphalt is, is is it mentioned? Asphalt was specifically prohibited in 1995. Wasn't sp specifically prohibited in 2011. This was a citizen's petition that came before that, that, that came on that came, came before the board of selectmen for inclusion on the warrant last year. It wasn't the planning board; it was a citizen's petition. I, I need you to, to make sure as you're moving forward, consult the latest rules. I've included them in your email, I, and you 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 can find the entire doc, document online, all the zoning bylaws. If you check check your email, I wrote I, I show, showed you everything. The new table of uses and the new definition of I have that factor. information. At, at, on the table of uses and all the other prohibited uses are, are part of that um, table of uses but not the asphalt um, pro prohibition I'm not going to discuss that or use up my two minutes on that I'm appealing to this board in the town because I am going to we are going to be filing contacting attorney generals office and the municipal law and to review all the proceedings that have happened here and I do believe that the town of Uxbridge has legal authority to postpone public hearings until a matter that is going to affect the town legally through litigation <laughs> probably like the litigation that that has gone on in the past, for the same reasons, um, whether it was an asphalt, citing an asphalt plant or power plants, it's the people decided that they did not want to have any of the, um, those types of <coughs> facilities in Uxbridge. And I'm appealing to this board. Make sure you appeal to, to the planning it. board. The planning board is a responsive group. It is the group that can postpone its own public, public hearings. And if there's enough of a public outcry, I'm I, I, I can't they are speak not. The board. They are not meeting until okay. January 9th. Let's, when the, at Jill, the next meeting, Sean, we've gone far enough. We cannot control what the plan. This is under the planning board's jurisdiction. If you have complaints, you should go to the planning. Why was anybody at the planning board town meeting? The meeting. There were people at the last, and we addressed our concerns, and we were pissed off and not able to make an entry and not pulled in and down for the meeting. Do you find that odd? It's nothing we can, we don't control the planning board. Not tonight. We're not doing it tonight. My whole question is I would like us all to be able to sign in so that we can prove that we are here for the citizens forum. That's fine. And that you did not allow us to have our voice. So I want that documented. Everyone who's here to talk about what? this and have support against the asphalt plant gets to sign up. Thank you. We're yeah. taxpayers. We have we a right to talk. Have to live, so I'll sign in and I'll mm -hmm. No, That's wait a minute. You do not have the authority to Jill's just to talked for 20 minutes here. We're not, it's not even on the agenda. I am. It's not gonna, we're not gonna decide on anything tonight, Rick. Because you all put her up to speak her piece. We didn't put her up, that was her on all her right, own, right, and we're on. all here on our own. Water. My name is Jennifer Gallo, Hi, Dr. Name. Jennifer Gallo, 370 Elmwood Avenue, Uxbridge, Massachusetts, and I want it documented on the video that is being done right now so that the town residents understand that none of us who are here that came here and took the time to come here and talk to you are given that opportunity. As taxpayers of the town of Uxbridge, that is atrocious.
And I also want you to know the Attorney General's office has already been told about this. They've already received my complaint. Thank you very much. Can I get your last name again? Sure, G-A-L-L-O, Gallo. Yes, okay. too, I did. Thank you. Sure thing. Thank you. No problem. Joseph Frisk, 85 Ironstone Road, Uxbridge, Massachusetts. And I'm here for the Citizens Forum as well. So thank you for, for allowing me to speak. I don't have a lot to say because I know you have a meeting. Um, I just wanted to sign in here and let you know that's why I'm also here today. My family was uh, part of the, the, the group in South Uxbridge that got together the first time that the asphalt plant was proposed in this town and collected funds together to get legal support so we could get the 1995 component added to the, the bylaws. Also a member of the zoning board. I'm actually extremely frustrated to, to see that that was something that was dropped at some point in time. So yes, we need to follow the process and get it added back to the bylaws. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'm Rick Dauphin, 344 Elmwood Avenue. I'm going to stop my uh, two minutes here. We'll let the clock run out. We didn't even do that in pro football, you know. <coughs> two minute warning. Now, as a citizen, I, I guess I can voice my opinion. You know, we spent a lot of time in 94, 95 to uh, get this pushed through so that there wouldn't be any, in, uh, any asphalt plants because the, the people uh, did not want it. And it was voted on back then by uh, 172 members of the town of Uxbridge, 10 of which were in favor of it, 162 of which we were opposed. <clears throat> now, be it, it you know, may not be your responsibility to uh, have anything to do with this, but I thought the Board of Selectmen oversaw what the, uh, and I may be mistaken, but, the, you know, the Board of Selectmen overse were overseer of the other boards in the town, but I, apparently not because uh, it doesn't look like you're overseeing much of anything. Um, we don't have the authority. We don't have the authority to appoint. Uh -huh. All the boards and committees that are well that are statutorily formed. I don't understand. Their own rules. The, and okay, their own and boards, the their own rules. You know, they can just call a meeting together and decide to eliminate, you know, verbiage from zoning laws that were voted in. They just arbitrarily eliminate. Town meeting voted, and this is a learning experience no, the, for everyone. the town meeting didn't vote on it. They voted on the 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 thing the that was already reverbalized. It was it was written wrong. That's what they voted on. Not a question of written wrong. It was written, and you know, I tell people all the time, your life is affected <coughs> more by what happens in the town hall than by what happens in Boston or Washington. We have town meetings where important things are voted on that affects everyone. And we'll have, we'll be lucky to have 100 people there. But no one gets involved until it's something that affects them. And many times there are things on the agenda that affects people, but they're not aware of it. But we have no control over that. Okay. You know, we urge people to attend town meetings and to be informed. But people go to a town meeting and are handed a 72-page document that they are looking at for the first time, and they vote based on what three or four people get up and talk about mm -hmm. without having read it. But we're not responsible for that. Okay. Sir, can I also Thank say that, can I also say that, that be, because we're sitting here, it doesn't, doesn't say we support this asphalt plant. So don't think we all support it. Thank you for the, my two minutes. Thank you. I'm just going to put a signature down. That's Edward Martinson, 142 South Street, Uxbridge. Thank you. 
to go to Portland on Wood Avenue and Ridge. Uh, <coughs> I was in politics. I was an assessor at the time. J uh, Tim, I think you were on the board of either the board of uh, board of health, or board of health, correct? And Peter, you were on the board of selectmen at the time. That was passed, wasn't it? My mind can't go back. Oh that yes, far. your mind can go back. <laughs> your mind can go back 33 years. All right, but in any case, in the South uh, South Oxbridge area, we've had a power plant, an asphalt plant, a horse racing track right off here on West Street, and a bike racetrack that was terminated just about two years ago, okay? And all of these were basically for noise and air pollution from the residents in the area, and they were put to rest by the Board of Selectmen or you voice your opinion on it. Now we have an asphalt plant that's coming back 15, 20 years later, trying to establish in the same place that it, it tried before. This, pro this poses air pollution or possible air pollution, ground pollution, and noise pollution. And we have an aquifer that we have protected in this town for over 30 years, and now the town is ready to give it up. That affects everybody in Oxbridge, North Oxbridge, South Oxbridge, every town in the area, because it's an underground lake. You know you've had the studies, okay? And we're ready to give it up again because an asphalt plan wants to come in and we got to remember what is the main component of an asphalt plant it's oil it's oil based look at the look at the components of it it has to do with rubber it has to do with oil and it has to do with uh, with uh, shingles ground up shingles it has to do with a lot of stuff everything that's hazardous I'd say you reconsider and probably put a stop to it because you're endangering the whole town now. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? My name is Kevin Gallo. I'm a resident of Elmwood Avenue. Uh, you have said that this law got changed or our bylaws got amended roughly one year ago. I'd like to ask you if you happen to know the answer to this. Was the bylaw amended or presented to the public in such a manner that it called out the changes that were being made? In other words, the new bylaw was presented to those members of the town to vote on, but was the existing bylaw represented in such a way that it was obvious to the voters what was being removed? It was in addition. Actually, I gave Ms. Kenrick the, the copy of the warrant article. So it was an addition? Correct. So the townspeople had no addition idea? And a change. Addition and a change. Because what was really affected was the definition of manufacturing. In, in, under the 1995 but if you did not list what was originally in it, the townspeople were not aware of what was actually being changed. That's possible. That is not fair, that is not correct, and that is not acceptable. That's my point. I have spent a lot of time over the last several days calling concerned citizens, townspeople, people that fought this battle years ago, including some of the people sitting in this room, and very concerned over this. This is not an acceptable manner for which to be expecting the townspeople to make an appropriate decision in a vote. As the gentleman on the end here made it as a point, we show up, we get to read an abbreviated version of it and vote on it. Most citizens do not actually get the opportunity to review these things in advance, in detail, and have comparative notes to explain to them and make it clear to them what the changes are and how it may impact them. If you present something without presenting what the original form was, then the citizens don't know what gets changed. That needs to change. 
This is a citizen's petition, citizens remember that as well. But citizens are allowed to make petitions. And when it affects something such as this. given the opportunity to yep. review the warrants, whether the citizens, I just, I want to be clear, I think citizens do have the, the warrant is published in a timely manner, so citizens have the opportunity. Not all citizens take the opportunity to read it. It's, it was so little, it's, it's not quite fair to represent it as though you show up at town, town meeting, and that's the first opportunity anybody gets to see. Well, maybe we need to change that so that people are clearly aware if you've got an existing bylaw that somebody wants to amend, that the changes and differences between this are clearly called out. I don't think it was ever spelled out that an asphalt plant was included in that manufacturing. Also, the board agreed to use the standard that this type of response was to the board of selectmen in their discretion to determine the zoning board of appeals. Right. That was brought forth Not by the citizens to the zoning board. The Board of Selectmen approve every, every, every article that goes on the warrant. Right. And we approve it's inclusion. It's a citizen's petition and it's not listed here. It's just We've had a, some formatting um, controversies over the last few town meetings. I'm sure we're, we're going to be looking at every one of those now. Unfortunately, the town went through a lot of effort many years ago to stop an asphalt plant from being put into this town. They went through that effort and then they went for a further effort to amend the bylaws with some very specific verbiage. It should be evident and very clear that the citizens of Uxbridge do not want this type of facility in our town. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Suzanne Dawson, Elmwood Ave. I was on that original planning board and we deliberated many hours with the verbiage. And we were all saying, oh, just put asphalt plant in. No, let's make sure we make every aspect known so that in the years to come, if there's ever a question, any type of asphalt would not be welcomed in our town. And if I went to that town meeting, I would not have been able to compare what they were voting on when we changed it in last November to what I originally <coughs> saw that group of people putting together. Not when you're at a town meeting where you're doing all these amendments and things. That's an unfair way. As far as the planning board goes, last week's meeting, I got the impression, and I sat through it and listened to everybody, I got the impression that the planning board told, seemed to seem to say that Evergreen Development has a beautiful package. They're glowing reports. We should be happy that they are coming to our town and being a business here. Everything that was questioned with their project was we were told was minimal. Minimal amount of trucks, 30 a day the two outlets for the highways right there. Well, 30 a day times six days a week is 180 trucks. Multiply it times the number of days they're working in a year. It's only seasonal. Well, last year was a great year for them to work. They could have worked 12 months. You know, the, and then we asked them about the um, toxic emissions. Oh, only minimal. Everything they showed us was minimal. Nothing could be compared. And we were told, well, we're going to meet again on the 9th, but it looks like it's clear sailing. The Board of Health has already okayed it. So of concerned citizens, we came here to see what you people wanted to say. Give us the right direction, and we'll follow through. Because I don't think it's right. Thank you. Thank you. Do you want to say something? Okay. <coughs> uh, Howard Fortner, uh, 44 North Main Street, uh, here in Uxbridge. Uh, let's see, I uh, am generally uh, well informed about what goes on about town, and um, I heard about the asphalt plant uh, yesterday morning for the first time. And I asked the question about what is going to be manufactured there? And the answer was, who knows? Uh, so anyway, um, on uh, December the 13th, uh, via email, I asked a question, and I have not received an answer. So therefore, uh, I am here tonight to say Hello there, Board of Selectmen of the town of Uxbridge, Massachusetts.
please consider this a freedom of information request. I would like to have a copy of all written communications between town council and the board of selectmen of Uxbridge and any other elected, appointed, or employee of the town of Uxbridge relative to Article 15 on the Fall Annual Town Meeting Warrant 2012. This also includes the written and signed transcript of any telephone calls by any of the above relative to Article 15 of the Fall Annual Town Meeting Warrant 2012. Seeing anything either on the on Article 15 from Town Council? Uh, well, I don't. I don't believe there was a written. Anything written? Like. I just wanted to sign in. I'm Jen Sokol. I live at 310 Elmwood Ave. And uh, I'm just gonna sign in right here. Thank you. Anyone else? As far as I'm concerned, if anybody wants to leave their email address so that they get anything that I find out, I'll be glad to email you. Just throw it on the other side. And I'm just signing in, Joseph Sokol, 310 Elmwood Ave. Thank you. Okay, that's it. All right. Moving on. We got uh, old business. High school project. Okay, we had a joint meeting on Wednesday. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I didn't see you didn't put your hand up, so. While he's signing, I'd just like to bring up one thing. Anybody that did e email me, I did return my emails on the asphalt plant.
should have listened to Peter. See, Pete? Pete, they should have listened to you for once. And been there. <laughs> no one reads it. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. John, can we uh, I just wanted to uh, point out something to the uh, selectmen. Um, I've recently become aware of the availability of a parcel of land um, consisting of 40 acres, um, which is exactly adjacent to um, already town-owned land. Um, right next to the uh, well fields that are off of well, Newell Road or Depot Street, whichever way you go into that um, part of town. Perhaps you know, um, if you drive by the Burnout Mill complex and you continue on, it becomes a dirt road, and eventually after you pass, I believe it's Uxbridge Storage, um, you immediately run into this parcel of land that's 40 <coughs> acres. Um, Approximately 25 of those acres, having spoken with the um, real estate agent who's um, offering it, um, are, are wetlands and are essentially um, you know, undevelopable. However, um, a good portion of that 40 acres also would, um, if the town were to consider purchasing it, would protect uh, more of within 400 feet of one of the town wells. Uh, so I believe there's, it would add an additional um, protection for that well of another approximately 100 feet, um, which is currently on um, land that's um, owned by, um, I believe they're called the Newell Road Associates. Um, you'll have to excuse, I took a screenshot um, in order to just provide you with the contact information for the real estate person and their phone number. My phone number also appear, appears on there because in order to get that information, you need to set up an account. So if you see my phone number on there um, in the little box, it says 278. Um, that's just my personal phone now. So if you call that, you'll get to talk to me again. <laughs> um, but the advantages to this parcel is um, that it's 40 acres. Their um, you know, beginning asking price is 250000 um, which is very reasonable. Um, this is this um, parcel of land also contains we have there's a sewage easement and a sewage line that goes through this parcel It's directly adjacent to the um, the railroad tracks um, But that sewage line is having talking with us talk with a surveyor who was actually in the process of surveying the Worcester Providence bike path um, that is exactly along the bike path um, from Worcester to Providence, which is you know a projected project um, so in addition to the possibility of protecting more of the, um, the well field, also protecting more of the uh, bike, bike path, and perhaps if that's town-owned land, it would actually make a contiguous parcel that goes from the railroad tracks all the way to the Blackstone River um, to the DPW and the park that's adjacent to the DPW. Um, that entire you know, s section there would be town-owned land, so it would add on to a you know, significant portion that we already own. Um, what I envision there is seeing as along the bike path, or you know, you might have other ideas, but um, you know, I was considering that because there might be bikers passing through there, there could be a, you know a town-owned snack shop or something along those um, lines that people who are biking along the bike path might enjoy. Um, is that part of the pits too, Russ? Where the pit area is? Um, I'm, I'm not exactly familiar with uh, the pits. No. no. It's a further back. Further they back. go deeper okay. in. To get you to came in off. You came along Lab's Depot Street. Auto Body. Yeah, in. it's right behind Lab's Auto Body. That's yeah, the pit sand pits are all down in the back. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah it's not quite you. that far then. Okay. 
Um, so I want to make you aware of that opportunity, um, and uh, I hope that you um, put a consideration. The, I've been in contact with the town manager, just making um, him aware of this, and this is it's an evolving uh, thing. Um, it's, not a, it's not a rush in any sense. I imagine that there would have to be some sort of approval before the town in any case, but I wanted you to know that this is an important parcel that could add on to what the town already has to offer. Okay, any How questions? How much would you like to contribute? Mm. <laughs> as much as I can afford. The Conservation <laughs> Commission is going to give us a little money. <laughs> can you be more definitive? <laughs> thank you very All right, much. Thank you. Okay. Uh, wait a minute. Let's sure anybody else. Let me. Uh, let's do Harry. Okay. Here. Go ahead. Go ahead. Harry. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Um, appreciate you taking us out of order. Um, as you know, we've had um, quite a bit of discussion on this Blanchard Land Development Agreement. Um, with me this evening is uh, John Jewell, our um, consultant, who has been working very closely with us and also with the town manager. And as much as within probably a half hour, uh, 45 minutes of this meeting, we were exchanging emails back and forth with uh, suggested changes that uh, the town council had recommended. We, in fact, had uh, concurred with, sent back along, and, and uh, revised the land development agreement. And Sean has weighed in on it. I wish he were here, unfortunately. Uh, He's probably uh, elsewhere in the town hall, but um, that's understandable. So um, what we've done is, and I want to refer or, or, or extend the conversation to John Jewell, who was gracious enough in the 11th and a half hour to make the necessary changes, send them back along. And prior to the meeting, I had some conversation with Sean, and hopefully he shared not only the, uh, the, the, ch the changes in the LDA, but the um, uh, email that he sent along regarding the changes. So uh, I think uh, we're ready to go. We're in hopes that tonight you all can endorse the land development agreement. We don't see the changes. Uh, we've agreed with all the changes, frankly, that, uh, that, that Mr. Costello, our council, has uh, suggested. Uh, we've also had Sean at our latest last Wednesday board of directors meeting at the Crown and Eagle to have a conversation with us, to have a mutually beneficial uh, conversation regarding the why behind the changes <coughs> and what we could do to partner with him to bring those forth. So um, I think we're at that point. Uh, we're excited about it. We hope you all share that excitement. And if there are any specific questions regarding any of the changes, I'll ask John to uh, to certainly address those, and we're both here to answer any questions that you may have. So, John, if you speak to Yes, as um, Harry said, that uh, we did work very closely with Sean and uh, did clarify all the remaining issues. Really, they were more in terms of clarifications of the structure um, that ensures the town that it is a nonprofit, us Bridge Housing Associates, is involved, but that we have to create a limited partnership for. Uh, the tax credits to be purchased by investors and add to the equity toward the redevelopment of the project. We clarified language on the oil tank, which the town has uh, removed, and uh, soil testing will be completed on, and uh, just quantifying that issue in terms of the satisfaction of both parties, and just some legal procedural changes in terms of minor stuff, in terms of the tightening up the documents so that it would be uh, something that our lenders could support uh, when we submit to them. Obviously, that's a key to all the funding. And just uh, in regards to the number of units, um, there was a, a D, DHCD uh, just recently came out with a housing production priority requirement that it imposed on uh, uh, all projects submitting, which calls for 10% um, of the units to three, be three bedroom and 65% uh, of the units being uh, two bedroom. So we now have, uh, have to, had to adjust the, uh, the project to accommodate that. We met with the neighbors and, and talked through that issue and we supported a really good meeting on that. Harry led the, the development team in that discussion and really did have a very good meeting and we'll have follow-up meetings with the neighbors. So I think we're really in good shape and um, 
we're going to be submitting. This is the last document before we can submit the site approval application, which you will receive a copy. The town will receive a copy of as soon as we submit to the state, and uh, then you'll have additional time to comment when the state gets back to to you in terms of this application. So we're actually right on schedule in terms of what we're looking to do, and we're very excited about moving forward. Just one more further comment too, and I mentioned to uh, Sean this evening, uh, I was on co a long conversation with Senator Moore this afternoon uh, regarding a meeting next week that he, John, myself, and Sean will have in terms of the continued partnership developing this forward. You can rest assured that Sean will be the, re the arm of not only this board but the community and will be involved in every step along the way. We want him. This is going to be a, a partnership between Oxford Housing Associates and the community to develop a project that is going to be so beneficial to the community. That's why we conducted a neighborhood meeting last week. We sent out about 75 letters, John. We had about 50 people there in attendance. Yep. We not only had, had John there, we had our architect there, we had our community um, builders management team there in its entirety. We explained everything. We had a lot of good, good comments. There were some concerns that we assured them through the planning board, zoning board, and all the meetings that we would be here to address every one of them. For the most part, they were very responsive and receptive to the idea. So there's a lot of excitement around this project, and we are excited to, to partner with this board and the town manager, the zoning board and the planning board to deliver a deliverable to the community that says, this is good stuff and we're proud to be the sponsors of it. So, any questions, please feel free. We're happy to- Are any town officials invited? Excuse me? Were there any town officials invited like the planning board or the board Select of health? Or? To the community? Yeah. We wanted to keep it just to the community, Tim, and for this reason, we, we felt that we wanted to really listen intently to their concerns. And we did say to them that we're, we're going to be having the planning board meetings. All of me, we want everybody involved to be plenty of notice for that. But no, we, we, we just wanted it to be their night for their questions and be able to ask anything that was on their mind. And I think they did a great job of that, so. I have a question. Mm -hmm. I was a little surprised to hear that there's going to be a significant number of three-bedroom units in senior housing. Can you explain that? No, it's not, it's not it's senior housing. It's not family senior housing. housing. Right. No, it's what uh, is it? family housing, rental housing for families, uh, small families, individuals, and veterans. Mm -hmm. Seniors can be part of it. Uh, they're not excluded, but it was always the intent, the proposal was for family housing. Are these subsidized units? Uh, the units have subsidies, and some of the units are subsidized, but most of them are tax credit units where they were selling off the tax credit. We do have limitations in terms of income restrictions as a result, 50% okay. of the median or below, which allows someone uh, with three or four, uh, I believe it's $58,000 or less of income. So it, it's a pretty broad um, group of people that, and there's a 70% uh, community um, based, um, you know, that they can have a local preference. preference. Mm -hmm. And we're going to also have a veterans Veteran. preference as no, well, right. those two with approval of DHEB, and we're going to work closely with the town to see if we can even exceed the 70. <coughs> that was my question, the veterans preference yeah. on this, because I thought All this started out to be a veterans. You're right, and the veterans preference is number one. And, and the way it came about was we got very concerned as a board, one, that we wanted to have a project that we could get financed. Two, a project that would be accepted by the community. And frankly, when we started this whole thing, we said there's a lot of veterans coming back from Iraq and Af Afghanistan that need some help. If we went to the si age 62, they would have been age restricted and there would have been a problem with that. And so let's open it up, whether they're Vietnam vets, Korean vets, uh, Afghanistan, we, we don't care, w w they get preference. Then 70% beyond goes to Oxbridge which gets us closer, hopefully, to the affordable housing of 10%, which is what well, ultimately seems to be that, that magic goal. But in order to get the financing, which is the key, because we're going to need somewhere between 7 and $10 million ultimately to get this thing done. In order to get there, we have to have our partners say to us, 
this is the criteria, these are the criteria that you must engage in in order to qualify initially for this money. We're not calling all the <coughs> shots. We have to play in the arena that says what's our best chance of getting it done, favoring the veterans, all ages, favoring the, the, the folks in town to the greatest extent because it was once a town asset mm -hmm. and the town is willing to work with us. So how do we partner to that extent to make it more productive for all? And that's the reason why we, and we've been on this for well over almost two years of negotiations behind the scenes to determine what was most productive and, and popular. You have answered the question about how many units? 25. 25. 25, 25 oh. teacher. Yeah. 25 altogether. 25 together, right. Mm -hmm. Did you say that? There'll be five bedrooms, 17 hmm? suites, and three. You say an email to me? That means that requires um, another six or seven you say? state requirements for us to apply for the It's like it changes. Four Just got through with that five. Is it a uh, non-smoking facility? Yes, yes, I'm the only one here. We haven't got that far yet, but I, I believe it will. <laughs> Most of the facilities that we I can tell you, I, I can give you the answer to that. The answer is going to be yes, because we just adopted the same policy. And we're not only responsible for the Crown and Eagle, but Millville Heights as well. We just put the new policy in that says as of August of, of, of 2012, there'll be no smoke in the both facilities, which will follow through the same. So I can, and, and I'm addressing it from the board level. I can tell you that's going to be the case here. Could you uh, go through that again about how many three bedroom and? Sure. The, uh, there's five one bedroom units, there's 17 twos to propose and three threes. Okay. 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 Thank you. Um, 25 units, $10 million. Uh, about 8.5 million at this particular point is what we're projecting. Okay. Well, I used the figure 10 yep. because it, and that works out to $400,000. Per unit. Well, it's not that high. So okay. Let's say it's three hundred thousand right. per unit. Yep. The cost of development is substantial. The benefits to the town, as Harry said, is that you each town has a ten percent goal for affordable I, housing. I, I, I understand all that, but that's the taxpayers' money that's going to finance. Well, actually, investors are purchasing the tax credits, which is yeah. a substantial amount of that money. Yes. Funny. Okay. And a mortgage of uh, roughly right now about 1.2 million that we're going to be paying back to a local bank. Man, oh man, oh man, oh shit. <laughs> hey, let me address that because I know you and I have had many discussions, including this afternoon. There's this. Don't get me wrong. I like the idea of the use of the house. I agree. I agree. I agree. We have what is called, and, and, and I don't want to call it prevail and I'll call it mandated because you and I have had that discussion numerous times. Unfortunately, construction costs are all centered around unions prevailing. These are the things we got to deal with. And, 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 and to take- Harry, we only have to deal with it because people like right. people sitting at this table mm -hmm. and people who know full well mm -hmm. that $48 an hour mm -hmm. is not the prevailing wage for unskilled labor in Uxbridge. You got no argument with me on that. I would like to see this project cost 45% less and allow us to take that savings and go create another project. Well, we can do I that. I have no problem with we that. We can do that. In your conversations with Senator Moore, if you would make that point. I'd be happy Make to. it everywhere you go, because I'm tired of being the only one mm -hmm. standing up for the taxpayer. Well, uh, I would agree, think uh, I stand agree. up for the taxpayers. Thank so. you. I think I've been standing up for them, Pete. I, I well, want to say I've been on your $300, team. Three hundred thousand dollars for a two-bedroom or three-bedroom apartment is seems like a little steep. It's so true, but I want to say this, Pete, because this goes without saying. There's nothing more that I want to see, and as evidenced by what I've done in this community for many, many, many years for these veterans. I want to see our veterans who protect and serve us under the worst of conditions to come back and say, my town appreciates that. And there's no, there's no dollar sign in my head that says this is, the, this is the point at which 
I, I don't want to say we can or we cannot. Because when I see it, and I see them, I've been in a lot of VA hospitals, and I've seen them wounded, mentally and physically, and it breaks my heart. And I want to do whatever I can do, and do our board to deliver what we can deliver as a community to say we care and we're putting up our resources to prove it. That's Not my our concern. resources. We're Defense putting up people. the veterans' resources, too, sure. because veterans sure. come home and they work and they pay taxes. No argument. I agree. Being a veteran myself, I not agree. with any law. I agree. But. <laughs> I agree. I mean, I can't fix that to the point well, where. You can't. Well, my point is. It Harry, might take time. We're not trying. I agree. We're not trying to. No fix argument. It. And until we start trying to fix it, it's not going to get fixed. No argument with me on that. Harry, what's your your timeline expectation for endorsement? I know we had it on the warrant, the I mean on the agenda for this evening, and a lot of these last minute changes kind of just came through at like five o'clock right before this. Uh, I would like to ask Sean if he could comment on that only for an education purpose, where they have come in last minute. John, I know we've exchanged emails on it, and I know you were involved outside there, but it, could you reassure the board uh, of the changes that have been brought forth based on counsel and your conversation and your going back with, with John and I? Are they substantial in nature? Uh, is it something that you would recommend they take additional time to think over, or in fact, could it be accomplished this evening in your opinion? I got a question before that. Please, okay. Uh, now, any of these veterans going to be able to get a VA loan for this? That's a concern. It's a no. project. It's oh, a rental. it's a rental. Right, okay. they're not going okay. to rent. So uh, the, the loan is not okay. even a consideration. All right. Yep. So it's that priority yep. that they get that's significant mm -hmm. in terms of right. the ability to okay. get the affordable rent that we decided to do. That's what I'm worried about. Right. I just want to and, and that's another consideration for, let's say a veteran, and, and we, we thought about this, let's say a veteran comes back, and while they're away, let's say they have a couple of children, and they come back and say, geez, a one bedroom won't fly, a two bedroom won't fly, but I really need three bedrooms. How nice it's gonna be to be able to look them in the eye and say, you know, we, we got something for you. And you know, it's gonna make life a little easier for them. I know they're paying for it. We're all paying for everything, and that's never gonna stop. Some of them pay dearly. Right, but if we can honor our obligation to them and say, you know what, you paid enough already. We're going to help you. And when you come back, you can rely on us to at least you know, give you some consideration and hopefully a new start. That's what we're looking forward to. That's why we need to get our politicians to represent us in this. Senator Moore, Representative Kiros. Well, I can tell you right now, Sean will be there around that table. And I invited him this evening. I said, Sean, I want you at that meeting. Please do all you can. He said, I'll be there. Then Senator Moore will be there, John will be there, and, we'll, and you can be assured that all these points are going to be put on the table and hopefully addressed to whatever concern that we can get. I, I, I got no guarantees, but I can't guarantee what our politicians think. I, I can't guarantee that. I can only guarantee what we're going to do, what we're going to bring to the table, why we want to bring it to the table, and hopefully the result we're out seeking. So, so Sean, if, uh, if you could make those comments, I'd appreciate that very much. Yeah, I mean, but when I initially spoke to council about this back in the spring, the original LDA and this, or recently, <clears throat> we could have uh, put the, or the original agreement in front of the board because this is such a friendly sort of um, deal, if you will. Um, there's nothing in the original language that would have been a deal breaker. I think the, the, the changes that you see refer the LDA back to the proposal Right back in the spring, we didn't have a proposal. The RFP hadn't been out, so now this goes back to the proposal. The largest change from the proposal was the 20 was the moving from the 21 units to the 25, which is simply a reflection of the demands or the desires of the granting authority, basically. Right. So, um, and we did add in a couple of protections. I would say from the town side, we examined, um, you know, what was what's going to happen if. If there's extensive contamination from the oil tank that's already been been removed, it was intact, by the way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 980 <laughs> gallons of oil in it. Uh, so, uh, and I'm in preliminary uh, 
discussions now to try and try and get the engineering firm in there and get that all ta taken care of by the end, end, end of the year. Um, and the other thing that um, the the latest I think that we that uh, UHA agreed to was to cover the cost of um, of the alarm serve serve services down there. So w which we cut our cost by about 60 or 70 percent, I guess, by installing a new system and changing companies. Um, and so, uh, so I, I would say the the for all intents and purposes, the document is as it has been. The much more detailed document uh, provided this all goes through is going to be the is going to be the purchase and sale, sale agreement. So. Just a good continuation of the original UHA, the Uxbridge Housing Authority, which started the Veterans Parkway mm -hmm. right off of High Street and then continued it on to eight more houses, which were duplexes for veterans. Mm -hmm. So this is a good follow-up. Very proud of you. I appreciate that, Tim, and, and I thank you very much. Um, and one other reason why, Jay, to address your concern. Um, we want to get in real quick in, in consideration. This could be two to three years before we get everything finalized in terms of the whole buildup, but it's all predicated on where we get in the consideration for these funds and these limited partnerships that we're going to create. Savers Bank is already committed, and I shared that with you, for 875. I think it'll be north of a million dollars, as we've discussed, that they're committed from a local standpoint. Now, in addition, what we have to do is we have to file with CDAC, which is an acquisition fund and pre-development loan agreement. The sooner we get in, and, and we're meeting with Senator Moore next week, I'm trying to connect all the dots in a sequential way that says we're not only serious, but so is the board, and also so has the chairman by his, on your behalf, writing, we put the letter together, he signed it, saying that he's locally behind this process. We want to get everything going so we're one step ahead of our competitors, and we have several competitors in the state that frankly are thinking of the way we're thinking. We are light years ahead in some cases, because John represents some of these competitors his John Jewell and Associates. And he's been good enough to tip me off and say, you know what, keep it moving because you're ahead of the- Don't tell your other clients that you're tipping yeah. off. The yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so uh, we, <laughs> yeah, so that's, if, if any reason, Jay, I, if there's anything that, that's- Well, it's just, I, I think the board has always been supportive of this project. Right. Mm -hmm. it's, I, it's come forward. We haven't had a chance to read a document. I would feel uh, inappropriate to put a burden on Sean to have interpreted it with none of the board, or at least I haven't had a chance to read the business. I don't know if the others have. And I just don't think it's good practice for us to sign it without reading it. Okay. With that said, I, I'd like to understand the timetable because you've got dates and deadlines mm -hmm. that you want to hit. Mm -hmm. And my preference would be to pass over to everyone's had a chance to at least read the changes because the worst thing in the world is something goes wrong down the road. It's going to come back here. You know, we'll have a group of people and we'll pull the tape and everyone will say, oh yeah, we, you know, town council said it was okay. And I, so I just want to make sure we're covering it uh, and protecting Sean and protecting the interests of the sure. board. I understand. It, and Harry, I would like to see at least the chairman attend that meeting too, along with Representative Kiros and Senator Moore. Which meeting is that, Bruce? Uh, whatever meeting you're having with it, you're going to invite Senator Moore? The one on the 25th. Right. Oh, next week. Right. Okay. Um, I think being part of the town project, it should, yeah. it, I think the chairman should at least attend for us. I have no problem with that. I mean, if that's going to make it easier for you, uh, I, think it, I, I think have no problem would. with that. I think it would. Okay. So when is your next meeting that you would be able to? Funny you should ask. <laughs> <laughs> we yeah. just happen to have it here. <laughs> On tonight's agenda is the 2013 DOS meeting schedule yet to be approved or discussed, which has January 14th as the next proposed meeting date. January 14th? Yeah. Okay. I. But we can have a meeting in the meantime. It doesn't say we, we can't have a meeting. Um, not that it's going to make a difference. If you need it sooner. Yeah, not that it's going to make a difference to the project. Uh, I, um, I'll be unable to attend that meeting on the 14th. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll make sure that um, my vice president's here to, in fact, um, take care of what needs to be taken care of. Um, but then again, I, 
I know that the reason why I wanted to see if I could wrap it up is I know the land development agreement has in fact, it has to be signed by me as the president, it has to be signed by the board of selectmen and they all have to be notarized. So, I mean, if it can't be done to land, we'll just have to make some arrangements. That's why I said we can have a meeting before. It would be preferable if you could. Um, yeah. I'm not gonna talk for Harry or anybody. What is your preferred date, just so? Uh, well, prior, sir, right again, because the prior to the 31st right. of, of December. Okay. In December, because mm -hmm. we have to submit yep. uh, to the state State will have 30 days to review what we submit, and then it comes back out to you again for comments. So you'll have another opportunity to review uh, Blanchard, many opportunities, but the next one would be, the sooner we get in for them to review, um, takes out the letter to you, and that gets our sign off, so we can get our approvals, and it gets really the ball rolling. So mm -hmm. we could have a single issue meeting. Yes, yeah. Yeah. We yeah. Have to like we do. Right. We can have it in the morning. We can, you know, as soon as possible. As soon as we get the information. Said it's reasonable to pass over. You know, that was my opinion. Yeah, I want to read yes, it. Yes, I'd like to read it too. If I hadn't read it. Well, that would be great. I'll give I you support that. it, I and I really appreciate that. We can meet any How anytime. Does, is it we need before? Well, I just need a couple of days. One day, two days. Uh, as soon as I see it. A couple of days at the most. I mean, I, I can do it in less than that, but we got to get Not the whole lot posted. There. So that's forty-eight. Yeah. Personally, I don't need that much time. Do it Thursday afternoon. That I'm, available. I'm available. I'm available. We'll need so you. This Thursday? Yeah, so I'll make a motion. We'll pass over this, make the this agenda item okay. uh, to be continued on Thursday. Thursday. Second. Thursday would be, be 6 o'clock, same time? Second. No, no, we can have it in the afternoon or whenever you want it. Okay, well, whatever yeah, works yeah, for you. We can have it. it. Yeah, I mean, I don't know it. whatever time, just so I can... All right, so we'll wait and see whatever time you, you plan well, it, but it'll be this Thursday. Is there a preference? Not for me. Probably have it in the morning, no. fine with me. Thursday's actually pretty well opened all day long, so. Okay. We only need three. Yeah. That's only what it means, we only need three people. So. <clears throat> is there a good time for you, Harry? <clears throat> Bad time for you? <laughs> we'll meet you at Gia's. And you bring the tab. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm staying away from that. <laughs> well, Thursday, I, I, I can't. I've got 11.15 in the morning. That's my only commitment that I have. So whatever, if it's late afternoon or, or early evening, whatever. 10 morning, 10 in the morning? You should have morning commitment. Okay, I can't. 11.15, I, okay. I have a commitment. Okay. Which will take one me until 1 o'clock. 1 o'clock. You, you, you one, one I, I can be here at 1 o'clock if you want to meet That's at 1. That's fine. Is that convenient? Sure. That's fine. John, are you okay That's with that? Okay. Okay, Thursday at 1. Okay. Okay, great. I appreciate that very much. And um, sorry for things coming together in the 11th and a half hour, but I guess sometimes that's the way things go. And, uh, but I, I want to thank all of you, and Sean especially, I want to thank you for, for all, all the late. Um, minute work and, and, and Tracy same thing so uh, thank you very much appreciate it see you Thursday thank you. thanks thank you thank you Capital planning report, and then we can go for the evaluation. We have a, you want me to do a quick update on oh, this? I'll one? let him go. On. Oh, okay, okay. That's it, okay. That's fine. That's fine. Good. I don't know what Edward's doing here. Uh, thank you, and thank you certainly for accommodating um, this being on the agenda of tonight. We've had a rough night already, so try to take a little emotion out of the air. Um, as you well know, the uh, bylaws require that uh, the there be a capital planning committee and that it report annually uh, on its recommendations and that that report is given to the town manager. The capital planning committee met last Wednesday 
and we've submitted our report to the town manager. Um, but we actually also felt that it would be important to share this information on a broader basis because um, there's a need uh, clearly for people to try to see things in terms of what the priorities of the town are. Um, I assume you have a copy of the report and you've read it? Okay, so I'll, um, let me just, uh, you know the, know the charge and you know the background. <coughs> um, the criteria I think is important. There were uh, nine uh, uh, criteria provided. First one was risk assessment. Second was public safety. Third, legal mandates, consequence of non-compliance with um, or cost compliance. Conformity with town plans and goals, cost effectiveness, return on investment, useful life, the, op the impact on the operating budget, the percentage of the town's population benefiting from a project, recreation, cultural, and aesthetic value, and finally, supportive economic development. Um, we met with um, every town department um, and uh, had a long list of uh, needs given to us. Uh, we went through that, um, and I will say that I was actually quite pleased in many ways that we quickly agreed upon what we thought were the highest needs. And again, those are primarily on the issue, dealing with the issues of uh, public safety um, and health, quite frankly. The highest need we, we saw was coming um, out of the DPW, and that was for bridge uh, culvert repairs. Um, there were actually didn't give this to you, I should have, but there were about eight projects um, from um, Marywood Street, which is currently closed, uh, to East Hartford Avenue, which has a lot of traffic, to uh, West Street, which has a lot of residential uh, uh, population that uh, travels on that. And these are uh, identified as uh, culverts or bridges that were in serious need of uh, attention. Um, the total uh, price tag for what we recommended um, in terms of grouping these together was $1.9 million. Um, I'll be glad to go over that a little bit, but let me go on down the line if I can a little bit. The second thing we identified as need was the fire escape in the library. This uh, prohibits, because it's been, um, what's the word I want to say, uh, uh, outlawed, um, that it prohibits the use of the third floor right now. Uh, and that's a shame. Um, the cost for that project was estimated anywhere between uh, uh, fifty to one hundred thousand dollars. Can you explain why the hundred percent variation? No, I can't. This was came from the library. I think uh, the librarian had a range of figures and you know was prepared to go further in terms of getting more. Does repair slash replace? You know, is uh, it's fifty more, it's, a repair in the it would, Well. Um, it would be, uh, frankly, I think it'd be a replace. Uh, but, uh, um, but again, I, uh, this was the library, and you know, we went through this. We didn't, uh, well, quite frankly, what I'll say at the end, Peter, is I think if you think there sh there's traction here, and I think there should be traction here in terms of uh, dealing with these needs, further uh, investigation needs to be uh, taken care of uh, in terms of vetting these costs out. Um, I, I will be quite frank with you, there are three or four of us who thought that the numbers that we received from the DPW in terms of the culvert and bridge repairs, we, we question whether they were low. Um, so I think that again, what I would say is that let's see if we can agree that yeah, we have a problem and B, that we need to deal with it and then we need to do our due diligence and our, uh, the rest of our homework in that regard. So anyway, f uh, the library fire escape was something, let me just make a, uh, uh, first of all, I forgot to uh, introduce, Amanda uh, uh, Ayers is here. She's a member of the committee, also a member of the, uh, library, friends of, friends of the library. Um, so Amanda uh, certainly should speak up whenever she feels there's something to be added to what I'm saying, which will be probably a lot. Um, the, uh, the one thing that I personally found interesting about the library is there were actually three other elements um, that were presented to us that we thought were of importance. One was the fact that the HVAC was not working properly uh, in that building, and they were probably spending, in our opinion, maybe more on heat uh, than was necessary. What was the other one? The, the control. Just spend a lot of money on, on the air conditioner. Air conditioner. Air conditioner. Yeah. yeah, but this again. Well, all right. This is. Uh, the air this is this is heat. Yes. Okay. Uh, he said air conditioning and heat. 
Well, I said HVAC, which includes, okay. includes the heat. Um, um, the other element was, uh, I've just lost it. What is, what was the, the word? Landscape. Um, yes, thank you, it was landscaping. Um, Painting. No, actually, I think, Mr. J, I think there was there something else. The interior painting. Well, painting. I knew that one, but that's the last one, I think, in terms of the four. Oh, replacing the boiler. That's what it was. Uh, what it was. The boiler is old. It needs to be replaced. And then finally, the issue of the interior. If you've been in the library recently, especially on the third floor, it is um, unfortunate. Uh, peeling paint all over the place. Um, frankly, I would, if I were me and I, we had the means to do it, I would bundle those four projects together in terms of the... Um, the, the fire escape, the uh, HVAC upgrades that are necessary, the replacement of the boiler and the interior painting, and you would have a much, you'd have essentially a new or a usable facility, let's put it that way. Um, um, however, in the conversations, let me say, with the librarian, there was also a question going on in the library's mind, and I don't say this as the librarian, but the, the, the uh, trustees of the library, as to whether they need to do, they want to do an expansion. And if so, that price tag, I believe, was $2 million, two to $3 million. Wow. So they're at a point where they need to make, someone needs to make a decision whether we're going to go this direction or whether we're going to go this direction. That's why, again, I think a broader conversation is needed um, in terms of what's, uh, where we're going or what we need to have done. Um, the other elements we have, one was the front end loader. Um, for uh, $155,000, this it was a major concern in terms of uh, public safety, particularly snow removal. Um, you guys, we got uh, hit quite hard two years ago, and you know what it's like when you have snow and intersections and they need to be cleaned out and piled up, and if you can't see what's coming around the corner, you uh, face, um, obviously, concerns of, of accidents occurring. Um, uh, excuse me, I have no re disrespect to the library or anybody else that has to do with library trustees, but I found number three to be number two, really, when you're talking about public safety. Well, I mean, that's just, fine. I mean, you know, I'm just, I'm giving it, uh, Bruce, I'm giving it to you in terms of the vote uh, of, the, of the committee itself. And mm -hmm. this is, you know, the, again, the highest one by far was the, oh, no the, the culverts and replacement no uh, because of, again, uh, Public safety, traffic. I mean, West uh, West Hartford is probably the second busiest east to west uh, road in town, um, and if that went down, it would be a be a problem. I um, have no doubt with number one, no uh, doubt at all. Um, uh, the ambulance. The fire chief came in. He needs to replace uh, ambulance number one. Uh, we agree with that for obvious reasons. School department came in and they said they need to essentially replace their thematic controls that they have at the schools. Uh, they are spending now about $40,000 a year for repairs. The cost for the controls are $200,000. Anyone can do the math that says, you know, you replace that, you can save that $40,000 and then you can get a payback over a six or seven year period of time. Um, and, and we think that that makes a lot of sense. Um, the other thing related to schools was the softball slash practice field for the high school. Um, that project uh, will be essentially completed once that is done and um, the board, uh, the committee, I'm sorry, felt that that was um, of, in, of uh, great importance to the town to complete that project. Um, this a next... Price, a, a price tag on that? Sorry, what? A price tag on that? Um, I believe it's $200,000. Um, I did not put it down here, but I, I went back and checked my notes and I believe the figure was $200,000. Um, the uh, next item, which was the rest, uh, let me just say that as I go through these, we, we, they fall into various buckets. Uh, some of them fall in terms of the general fund, uh, in terms of how, where the payment would come from. Some of these are coming from the enterprise funds, like the uh, ambulance would come out of the enterprise funds. This next one, uh, which would be the um, West River pump station, would be an enterprise fund, uh, probably uh, the sewer uh, fund, if I'm not mistaken, in that regard. On this one, um, this one scares me, quite frankly. This one um, relates to the deteriorating uh, pump station um, on the w for the West River area on um, Heckla Street. Um, the uh, station itself is within the floodplain of the Blackstone River. Um, and uh, both, I believe, um, 
DPW director and former Chief Ostrowski uh, were remembering that when we had that flood oh, about six years ago, that uh, that station flooded. Um, and it was a health concern, uh, both not in terms of, if that goes out, it's not only a concern about it not operating, and therefore inconvenience to the residents who are served by that station, but also a health concern in terms of being in the floodplain um, and you dealing with uh, wastewater in, in that regard. Um, and then the last one we mentioned, um, and this is kind of a wild card, and that is uh, the, the uh, fire chief came and spoke to us about the need of a new fire station. Um, it's up in the air in terms of timing of this, but we uh, understand that need and we endorse it, but uh, we just want to make sure we sort of put it out there as a, um, as a, um, an item that we are cognizant of, of and want to make other people cognizant of it um, in, that, in that regard. The title says fire department headquarters. Yeah. What it's does that mean exactly? I think it's a replacement of what you have over here in terms of uh, next to town hall here. Well, that's interesting because shortly after Bill became the chief, I spoke with him about uh, Peter Ostrowski's uh, plans for <coughs> the fire station on the Gray Rock property. Mm -hmm. And he indicated to me that that was not something that he was in favor of pursuing. So did he mention where this new headquarters is going to be? There was some discussion, but I, I'm not sure I want to be the one <laughs> that's just any of it in front of you all. Uh, there has been discussion, I know, I know that, but uh, it's very much up in the air in terms of timing and everything else of, the na of that nature. So Preference is to keep it in this general area. I on think you'd like to buy that river. building. Don't want yeah. it over on the other side Next of the river. Door. Post office. He'd like to get the old post office gone right there. Okay. Okay. Um, so, um, I guess I'll we'll make a couple comments and then throw it up to uh, throw it open to any questions you have. Um, first of all, I would say that um, as member of the finance committee for many years, when we had the um, downturn in the year 2000 with the dot com bust and then the state got into trouble, and then we later had obviously more difficulties. Um, the town suffered uh, on the capital side tremendously. Uh, the first town manager we had uh, consolidated all the funds that we had set aside for police vehicles and DPW vehicles and fire vehicles, and eventually they went that funding went away. Uh, then the next town manager cut the amount of money that we had set aside for roads and now all we have for roads is what the state gives us in that regard. So we essentially are, uh, our pockets are turned inside out in terms of funding for capital need. And if you follow the way we've functioned in the last couple of years, it's kind of uh, hand to mouth in terms of we will have uh, money available. We may be able to buy a fire truck or we'll go to get a grant or we'll do something in terms of a, uh, excuse me, a, a police a cruiser or we'll get a grant for a fire truck or we'll refurbish a fire truck or something like that. It's, not the way to run a business, quite frankly. It's not a way to run a town, in my opinion, as well. So I think we. I think one of the things that I would suggest to you all is that you know one of the one of the major problems that the town faces is how is it going to do its infrastructure, both in terms of the assets, in terms of you know rolling assets, but also clearly the the uh, infrastructure in terms of the town. Um, when we looked at the figures from the DPW, it's scary, quite frankly. Uh, you can say, well, those are just numbers, but, but you know, the fact of the matter is they're, 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 they're real, and, and we need to be very concerned about that one. Um, I personally, um, part of this report is my own opinion. The issue of building maintenance is something that we had set aside funds of $200,000 several years ago. It was taken away, $100,000 of, it, of it's been restored, but that's on the municipal side right now. Um, it would be good to make sure that our buildings are maintained so that they don't deteriorate and we have a bigger bill later on. The second one is the renewal of the, uh, of the fleet uh, vehicle, uh, uh, the vehicle fleet in terms of the, again, when I started on the Finance Committee in 2000, we had money set aside for cruisers. We, on an, we replaced on an annual basis. We had money set aside for what we were actually leasing uh, fire uh, vehicles and the DPW was well situated in terms of its funding there. So, and uh, I think that we have challenges uh, because we don't have that in place right now and our challenges are only going to get larger as we go forward. And then finally, as I said, um, what we recommended in terms of the DPW, 
really in terms of the general fund was the, the bridges and culverts and the front end loader. Still have problems to face in terms of how you're gonna pay for the roads and you got a lot of other major pieces of equipment out there that need to be, um, that are 25, 30 years old that need to be uh, replaced somewhere down the line and um, they're gonna be major problems. Um, so uh, our charge in some ways is done by giving this report to the town manager, but I honestly think that it's serious enough and important enough that we wanted to make to share it with you as the Board of Selectmen and um, hopefully at some point in time to share it with the Finance Committee as well and be happy to share it with others in terms of trying to get some, some agreement about what our priorities need to be so that we're not all going in different directions. And, can, uh, and I'm gonna pick on the library because I think I can do that and get away with it <laughs> by having the library going in one direction and we might be thinking, well, we're going in this direction to see if we can get some, some agreement about that. It's, it's something that clearly is the charge of both of you people in terms of the warrant articles if you're gonna do it that way and any election if you have to go through it a proper, uh, to proper proposition to an F override clearly the, the response of the town manager, but frankly, these are issues that, in my opinion, are so large that it's gonna need more than one or two people championing it. It really needs to pe have people to say, yeah, we need to deal with this issue, and we need, to, we need to make this number one or number two or number three, whatever you wanna do it, uh, before we go off doing um, other things in that regard. So I'll end my little speech and- uh, Go ahead, just to interrupt. And no, I'm done. But <laughs> you're asking the board here for, for help reaffirming or reordering the prioritization so that you can continue on with the cost estimates, method of financing, and timing. I, I, we're looking to see, uh, yes, that's exactly right. I mean, we're looking to see whether you think this is a priority, and if you think it's a priority, then to help us uh, help yourselves, quite frankly, in terms of doing the due diligence and saying, well, you know, as Bruce said, I think the uh, uh, front end loader is more important than the fire escape in the library, or whatever it is. But again, you know, you may say, well, you, if you're going to raise, I'll just play devil's advocate. If you're going to have to raise taxes to do this, I, I'm in favor of, of nothing. Okay. And then you, you talked about roads, but they're not on the list. No, they're not. Uh, because the committee thinks they're not in the top 10 or top 8. Or and that's not because they're not important. It's just simply because there's so much you can uh, bite off and chew at one time. And in a follow-up on the bridges and culverts, you know, there's eight within that list. Um, is it the recommendation of the committee that it's an all or nothing? Um, as opposed to you know, doing... Let me uh, answer that in a slightly different way than you probably would like. The, the, when we put them together, I was prepared to, to within that grouping, mm -hmm. uh, to say one, two, three, four, five, six, or eight. Um, the feeling was that they are all important and they all should be dealt with. Um, uh, so um, again, if, if on further uh, examination, the feeling is that it maybe you could go do four or you need, or, or conversely, you might even expand it. Um, but when we went over each one of these, I mean, the case of Marywood, um, you know, Tim obviously knows this, uh, Marywood's closed. Yep. Um, I asked the finance director to um, how many people lived on that street and how much they pay in taxes. The answer came back this afternoon, $74,000 in taxes, and you're living, on, you're, got, you're living on a street that's closed because the culvert's not, not functioning. So, I mean, again, the, the feeling was that all of these things were a Fine closed, though. It's just, it's a dead yeah. end. It's, yeah. Well, but you can't cross it. Correct. But it's not unreachable. You can still get Oh, yes, you can, yeah, right, you can. absolutely. If you want to go, over, you know. You have to go up a, a Kearney Street, you know. Right. That, again, you know, I, I'm not trying, we, let me just say that we had six meetings perhaps, so we didn't spend a lot of time drilling down into it, yeah. but we did spend time in terms of setting priorities, and I will tell you again, you know, we had a lot of different people um, on the committee, and this was the number one by uh, priority by far. Okay, so, I mean, uh, um, technically, I could walk away, I, uh, as of last week when we gave it to Sean, I don't think our responsibility ends with that. So we're prepared to work with whoever feels this is important to go forward and to um, champion the cause. 
Can I make a few comments? Sure. Uh, can, uh, Peter, can I have just one more thing? Um, and you won't like this, but I'll, I'll do it anyway. <laughs> sure. um, one of the things that David Genero was kind enough to do um, was, and he may, you may have gotten this as well, is the uh, cost if you did it through a debt. Um, uh, so the cost for the bridge uh, and culvert repairs at 1.9 million would be $130,000 annually. I okay. calculated um, the, I assume it's 20 years, so if it was 20 years, I'd calculate the interest rate at like 3.2%, but if David's not here to tell us. The library fire escape, um, again, fifty to $100,000. I assume he took the higher number. It was $13,000 a year. The front end loader, no, he took the lower number, it looks like. The front end loader at $155,000 was $34,000 a year. The school department, the thematic equipment at $200,000 was $41,000 a year. The softball slash uh, oh, all right. uh, practice field at 250 was 27,000, and then the West River pump station at 200,000 was 21,000. 27 a year. 27,000 a year on the field. Uh, which one? On the field? Yeah, yep. 27,000 a year. Uh, if you don't have this, I actually thought it was. I thought we it have was, it. I we have it. it. Yeah. It's in your card. Because I think it, I got it. Well, I was including the email that you had it in. No, I'm sorry, Peter. It's all right. Um, I think there are some structural things that need to be changed. First, I think it was a mistake to have this school town maintenance account. Maintenance should be part of the operating budget of every department that has a building or a number of buildings. And that shouldn't be because it, it doesn't work. Um, there's a lot of money represented here. And it doesn't even include probably the, the biggest dollar item, which is the roads. roads yep. Roads deteriorate not in a linear fashion. It's a, it's a curve like this. Once the cracks start and they open up, the water gets in and it, it deteriorates very, very quickly. So we need to do something about maintaining the roads, which we've done virtually nothing of for a lot of years. When you have a committee, a capital committee, that based on you know different departments, it's almost axiomatic that everyone's going to get something. The reality is we can't do everything. The reality is we do have to make some decisions. It might be nice to do all those bridges at one time, <coughs> but we have to look at each individual one and assign some priority. To it. How much does it cost? You have it in the beginning, cost-benefit um, you know, analysis. You have to do that. I have a niece who lives in Princeton, and they have a very, very nice house on a long road not too far from a bridge. And about 10 years ago, the bridge got wiped out. And at first, they were very upset they wanted that bridge replaced. A few years went by, and the bridge wasn't replaced. And then sometime later, there was a movement to replace the bridge. Well, the people all banded together and said, we don't want the bridge replaced because now we live on a dead end street and we like that very much. So sometimes people say they want something, not always, but they want something and then they can't imagine life without it and then they live without it and sometimes they find, gee, this isn't that bad. But the reality is we can't do all the things at the same time and I can tell you for myself I have no appetite for an override, none whatsoever. The maintenance of, of the infrastructure is part of the general operating cost of the town. And always, always, in every organization, immediate needs take precedence over maintenance and, and those things because the immediate needs are what the people who work in the department get. And it's our job to look beyond that and say, there are some things that we do that we have to stop doing. The upstairs in the library, as long as I've been in town, that wasn't used. Once in a while I would go up there and they would show me something. It's nice that you go up those curvy stairs and you know I enjoy that kind of thing. But on a cost benefit analysis, is it worth it? Well. I don't know. 
question, how would I put that in the priority? Not maybe perhaps as high as <coughs> we do things in the library now that we didn't do before. And the library, not only here, all libraries, municipal libraries, have strayed very far from their initial purpose, which <coughs> is to supply books to people where at a time where books were beyond the means of the average person. And I have many books from the Uxbridge Library and other libraries that in the cards behind on the last page on the inside cover, the rule was you had to take two nonfiction not to have one fiction because the role of the library was to help in educating people. Now people go to the library and get DVDs and videos. That's not something that we have to do. We used to do it. We stopped doing it because the quality of the videos is so lousy. The people who take them don't take care of them, and it's always stops, and they don't, they don't run, so we gave, gave that up. But we have to look at everything we do, everything we do, and ask, do we have to do it? What does it cost to do it? What would happen if we didn't do it? And, and for ev all the way down the line. And we have to prioritize things. And that's the job of the Board of Selectmen. Uh, I agree. Not the I agree with you, Peter. Committee, we, um, it's our job to do. We are giving you our recommendation based upon the task that was assigned to us. I should say Tracy's also on the committee. I apologize, Tracy, for not uh, noting. You're on that committee? I should. <laughs> um, it takes a brave soul to be on this committee. There are two department heads in there. The rest are set associates of the other department. Um, five or six. Yeah, this, um, ag sure. again, you know, this, from our point of view, it's one dimensional. We're looking at it from a point of view of yeah. capital. We're not looking at it in terms of taxes. We're not looking at it in terms of, you know, the operating budget. Uh, but again, um, I think that it, I just need to reiterate this is serious uh, I, I agree, business. Absolutely. We're serious business. And so, what I would ask, uh, again, is for you to take this under consideration, um, perhaps at a later time put it on your agenda so you all can talk about it in more depth. Um, obviously counsel the town manager in terms of what you feel um, needs to be done. Um, but I would also uh, just want to point out that I think this is more, this, this requires, what's the, I'm missing the word on this, uh, I want, but it requires a broader um, discussion. Uh, again, the finance committee obviously should be brought in this. this is, straight up what their, what their charge is to do. Um, I would like to suggest the school committee should be also brought on board in this regard because, you know, they're looking at their, their world as a sort of focused and not necessarily um, in terms of what the need of the rest of the town is. We talked a little bit about the library. Um, they ought to have that conversation so that they can understand the problems that, that the town is facing and then to clarify themselves in terms of what direction they feel they want to go in um, and we need to then determine whether that's kind of w in the direction we're, we are going as, it, as, as you see it or in a different direction and then how to, how to uh, facilitate that or not facilitate that. So uh, I, I just sort of throw that My two cents on that, I'd hate to uh, stop inertia of what's going and, and spend a lot of time deliberating over eight or ten things. It sounds like you've got a core set of things at least you can start the initial analysis on. Um, and I'd like to see the board support a representative, whether it's the chair or anyone on the board, to help you with, with the next step and represent our voice. You know, ultimately, whatever we vote, whether it's three to two or unanimous, it ultimately is just the voice of the board and it doesn't matter to me who carries that. Um, so I, I don't know if we all need a lot of time to think about what needs to be fixed. I think Rhodes is the only one that we've openly discussed here at the board that I didn't see directly on the list that I might want to include, but I don't see why we should suspend and prolong a discussion on this. Um, There's nothing, nothing here that is news to me. You know, I mean, it, you know, we know those, those needs exist, or the wants exist. Um, the fundamental decision we have to make is very simple. How are we going to pay for these things? And, you know, the, the capital committee has been around for a long time, and I don't know what keeps people on it. In fact, it was down to nobody at one time because there's no money. And who wants to be on a committee 
to spend money if there's no money to be spent. I mean, it doesn't make sense. So it's our function to think seriously about how are we going to rearrange the way we spend money in the town of Uxbridge in order to provide the necessary funds to do the things that really need to be done, but don't have the glitter that, you know, a, a tennis court does or, or some other thing does. Yeah, I think, well, Peter, you brought up the point earlier, which is, you know, the, the, what's the cost of not doing these things? I think that's gonna dictate the priority more than the five of us picking our favorite pet projects. Well, just think of think of how roads yeah. deteriorate. They start off like this, and they go like this, and then they just go like that. And pretty soon you have chunks of, you know, tar here and a hole there and, and so forth that, that's not going to work. And some of the roads that we have are rapidly getting to that, to that position. So is your hope, Ed, that we trim this list down to five? No. Four, um, a magic number? I, or I, 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 I was going to say wanted to, to share this information with you and to get your reaction. Uh, if you feel that um, we should go forward and continue to vet this, uh, do the do, do due diligence, that's fine. I will turn to the town manager and ask for help in terms of getting the, you know, like the DBW uh, to, to uh, re-examine the numbers and to make sure that we have the right numbers and to oh, answer sure. the question that Peter's asking in terms of what happens if we don't do this, you know, what's the cost benefit analysis. Um, but also, Quite frankly, I, I would like to see if we could get your, and I'm pushing the envelope a little bit, your endorsement that this is something that's more than simply the town manager, Board of Selectmen concern, that we should make sure that others um, have had a chance to um, weigh in and understand because, you know, you remember how it was uh, 10 years ago, we would have a school issue and all the school people would show up. We'd have a town issue, some people would show up. But there was never this coalition, co uh, co whatever the word is I'm trying to say. Getting together. Getting together, thank together. you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Getting together and saying, yes, this, this, is a, this is a real problem and we need to deal with that problem. And, uh, I think everyone recognizes the problem, but there's a, that barrier that you have to overcome to solve the problem, which is the problem. And that barrier is the money. Well, absolutely. I mean, and, and you know, you, your approach, Peter, may be... Uh, I'm surprised at how small the requests are. Frankly. Well, the, actually, Peter, I will tell you the requests weren't, weren't small. We left a lot off. Yeah. And, and to go to Jay's point, $500,000 for roads. I remember it was I, looking at something that was over $50 million. Well, the total amount, total price tag for that the town manager submitted last year in terms of the capital issues was $45 million. It was so, that $30,000 rowboat for Pelt Pond still on it last year? Because that was there for years and years and years. Yeah, it was going to be what, a rowboat what, what, and a boathouse. Yeah, what we tried to do was clearly take the top issues. We weren't, issue, we weren't concerned about, I'm sorry, I don't want to sound too degrading, but we weren't concerned about things that really didn't, weren't of major importance to the town. Again, if you're talking about an ambulance, I think everyone can understand you need to have an ambulance or, you know, a fleet that's up to, up to date. If you need to talk about roads, whether it's, you know, uh, West Hartford, Marywood, West Street, major, uh, not except for Marywood, uh, you know, West Hartford and West Street are major thoroughfares in the town. In the town. Uh, uh, if you're talking about a front and loader and you have a problem like we had two years ago in terms of the winter, you know, you, you, need, you, you, need, to de you need to deal with it. And if you don't have the equipment to deal with it, you got a problem. Um, same, same thing is true with, um, I'll just describe the, um, the case with um, the uh, West River um, uh, pump station. I mean, uh, if, if that thing flooded, and you know, not only we didn't have uh, houses that didn't have sewer, what we had contaminated, uh, that would be a, a travesty, quite frankly. So didn't I see a thing in the library, a repair fire escape, $6,000? Sorry, Peter? A repair fire escape, $6,000. To replace it was a hundred thousand at the beginning. I saw that. I'm yeah. Um, again, I'd have steel. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. How do you get hundred thousand dollars from that? Well, I went over and looked at it. The footings need to be replaced. Yeah. The, but the, the, other the, than that, the things solid. Yeah. But I just well, actually, see I think that. there was also concern about it's how it was attached to the uh, building itself. But I right. think it, that was. Uh, yeah, it's kind of shaky. 
Mm -hmm. And then, uh, so that's right. And the code now requires that there be a, a cover added so that ice doesn't build up if there if people, you know, it's, it's yeah, we're going to place to go in the winter. I mean, again, again, I worry more it, about public oh, safety. So yeah, cheap, yeah, yeah, it's hundred thousand dollars. Let me just say that again, we met with the department heads once. Yeah. And we had a lot of questions, but we didn't spend our time because, you know, as Peter says, you don't have any money, you know. You can talk about why, all you as want. As a friend of mine at work used to say, why you why re rearrange the deck chairs on the Titanic, you know, when the when the ship's going down. So we're not gonna waste it. If you think it's worthwhile, we will go back and because we Because that's what the British do. Uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway. Well we're American too. So anyway, if we if you think this is worthwhile, we'll, we'll continue to pursue it. If this is uh, listed, we're not going to see you for the next 15 years for some more money. Looks pretty reasonable we can do with that. <laughs> well, actually, I have to say I'm a bit of an awkward position because actually I don't think I should be on this committee being the moderator, but, uh, but I, again, I just says that you know, this is something we need to deal with. And having, having dealt on the finance committee for 10 years, I knew the problem was there. And, and it's something that it's serious, so, so we need to treat it accordingly. Thank you for your time. Okay. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Amanda, for, uh, thank thank you, Amanda. for being uh, thank you, Mr. <laughs> She doesn't understand. That's, that's, that's way beyond her years. Before her time. Before right. her time. Yep. Okay, Bruce. <laughs> You've waited long enough. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, just a quick update on the high school. As you know, we had a joint meeting on Wednesday, and not everything was accomplished there, but we did find out we, we do have an erosion problem at the multi-purpose field, <coughs> which they're going to have to leave some money out. The BSC group has come up with a solution. They're going to leave some money out of the project and take care of that. That has to be taken care of. Hopefully, by the spring, they'll be able to take care of it. Right now, we can just maintain what we have, you know, do what we can until the spring when we, we have a little bit more of a growing season. Okay, e essentially everything is done. What they're doing now, they're working off punch list on the building, the athletic fields, and uh, the future athletic fields. And we have a pile of loom that they have to protect during the winter so it won't erode. And, that, and how are they going to protect it? Uh, I think they're going to plant, well, I'm not plant some grass, but have something where it grows, yeah. some grass grows yeah. on it. Winterize. So Yeah, winterize it so in the spring they can right. reuse right. it and it's it won't erode. So no, it's not, it's no big not deal. Area. So it's not going to erode that far anyway. During, during the uh, Christmas season, there will be a couple of things being, uh, a couple of projects being performed that need to be taken care of, and that will be done while school is out. So it doesn't impact more money, to spend more money than we have to, or pay, pay, pay premium time. Uh, Excuse me? What kind of projects? Are you like the second, second floor egress. Oh, yeah. The uh, work in the auditorium, cover the wiring and, and little things. Well, the second floor egress is not a little thing, but it's being, that'll be taken care of during the vacation and any other punch list. Bruce, yeah. I don't remember that issue with the second floor egress being raised before. I remember hearing about that before. Well, I had a problem. No, I know, I know what yeah. the problem is. Yeah. I just don't remember hearing it from the reports that we get before. I found out about it from an external source. Oh, well, I've always sent you the, the meeting minutes and everything else. Was it on there? Oh, sure. Right. Sure, it's been on there for the longest time. And that, that's being, if I remember right, it's being That's paid. being taken care of by design. Raymond Design. Yes, it was their mistake. It was their mistake. They, they are paying for the full cost. But what they had designed was stupid. Yeah, the door lock. Well, the there's two the classrooms they can't yeah. use. And the roof ladder's being, re the, the roof ladder's being added on. Uh, they're trying to decide, the school building committee is trying to decide if they want to buy bleaches 
and uh, how many, you know, how many bleaches, or what the cost is. And that's basically what, what we're doing now in, in the uh, meetings we have on uh, Wednesday, Wednesday afternoon. We're, and uh, it'll go forward to the school building committee to see their feelings on it, see how much money they want to spend to either put in bleaches or Well, we know they want to spend all the money that they are able to spend, right? right? There's no yeah. thought about saying to the taxpayers, gee, we'll give it uh, we're not going to do this and this because we did what we really had to do and we're going to give this money back. They're going to spend every penny, right? Well, they're going to, whatever, whatever's, they're going to try to get the best they can out of it for the whole project. They want to spend all the money that they are authorized to spend. I'm not saying that that's bad. No, no, but they're, that's, they're, they're trying to get the money. most they can out of their money, uh, the money we have. Gonna, they if we can get them. it, we can get the bleachers, we're going to get them. And it's just a question of how many. And we're going to have to do a little earthwork to widen it out if they want more than, say, 250 to 500. Yeah, just a, is that track open to the public? Uh, that's one thing about the sign. It's just, that's going to deal with the sign is too. It is open. Three lanes, yep. outside three yep. lanes. And part of the signage is the reason why they're holding back some money for signage too, to now the hours and everything else, because you can't use it at night. There's no lighting at night, yeah. so it's going to be what used during the day. Hours? I don't see any problem with using it during the school hours. All right. There shouldn't be any problem during the light. Okay. All right. But, uh, the other thing is they, they had a thermal scanning of the building. We're waiting for the results now to see if there's any, you know, air coming in or water or anything like that. I was in the, in the school uh, to look at what they're going to do with the egress to the doors and so forth. And um, we happened to go into the, one of the classrooms there. It was a math, and I guess the man teaches a leadership class too. Yeah. The temperature was about 95 degrees in that room, similar to what we have upstairs over here. <laughs> and so he went downstairs, and Mike went on his computer because they, they can control everything with his computer. I'm gonna fix that right away. But he couldn't get into the computer because it wouldn't accept his password. Okay, so I just laughed. Oh, uh, you know. And how the Mercedes been. There, 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 there's always little problems like that. Well, when you're, when you're building a school, you have things come up, but all in all, it's a great looking school. And uh, if anybody's been out there that hadn't seen it or gone by and looked at it, it's a, it's a fantastic school. And the facilities are fantastic. It's six tennis courts, they got an all purpose field, football field, and like this, this uh, study said that, you know, that what they lack is a softball field and things on the yeah, north side. I went to a concert there. Wednesday, that Wednesday. The auditorium, yeah. beautiful. And it was, it was very packed, nice. right? The only adverse comment I heard was a complaint that there were enough seating right. for the people. Um, and I'm told that there's more seating there than there is at the yes. old high school. It doesn't look it, but It doesn't look it, yeah. but there is. And, and you can see more, and you can see it a lot easier and well, everything else. Maybe we should plan an expansion. Yeah, that's a good idea. That's why they left that one wall the way it is. But basically, that's it. And uh, hopefully, well, the winter work is basically done until the spring, where Greenscape will come back and they'll replant if they have to plant whatever. But all in all, it's a fantastic school. And I urge anybody out there that hasn't seen it, go down and take a look. But just don't try to get in it, unless you have permission, please. Don't what? Try to go in without permission. Try to go in without permission? Yeah, you know, in the school. Just don't try to walk in. Oh. Or, you know, use things that are not supposed to be used at night. There's no lights on a tennis court. No lights on a football field. If you get caught down in there, then you have, you're going to have a little problem because there is security. So that's just basically my update. Any, does anybody have any questions? No, no. no you did a great job. Bruce. Thanks, Bruce. Thanks, Bruce. You really kept up, kept your reports coming.
quickly as we've all had a chance to, to catch up. Um, you know, essentially in Sean's employment contract, the board <coughs> shall review and evaluate town manager performance annually prior to May 15th of each fiscal year. Uh, the review and evaluation shall incorporate the town charter, which is incorporated herein by reference, and then the chair, chairman of the board shall provide the town manager with a written summary statement of the performance evaluation findings of the board and shall provide an adequate opportunity for the town manager to discuss the evaluation with the board. So I, I um, tonight's agenda is to give Sean the chance to discuss it with the board if you, if you so choose. I, I think the, uh, I, I appreciate the effort of the board going through this. Um, we got together last summer, as you know, to, to try to formalize a process uh, to create some consistency over doing this. And we decided to move up the evaluation period to December so we can have multiple evaluation points and then try to try to put together a, a, a feedback loop such that um, if things are going well we can continue and encourage those things to keep moving forward and if things uh, needed areas of improvement we could identify them with the town manager and have him uh, address them between now and the next review period in such a way that one board because we can't guarantee this board would stay the same in May would at least have the opportunity to I'll call out and identify some things and then watch some progress or not and be able to comment on it. So th that was really the objective. Um, as far as um, for tonight, um, you know, for clarity, we, we talked about the evaluation process. We set, we set the agreement up um, uh, and, and voted that in in September of what, what the form would be. Uh, we would use and obviously got the feedback from folks of things that worked and didn't work with that. Uh, we defined the review period to be from May 23rd through November 30th. You guys all filled out your form. Sean filled out his form. We put it all together. I tried to digest it and, and analyze it in a way that uh, hopefully it made sense. It may work. It may not have worked for, for others and uh, welcome feedback on that. And then tonight I'd like to just uh, hit the highlights in, in the way that I'm defining a highlight. It, it basically went through the criteria that were in the individual forms that ultimately we had a majority consensus on for a good thing and bad thing. And so that was put together in the presentation that, that you all have seen. Um, and then uh, upon kind of quick review of that, we'll open up to Sean for discussion. And then I'd like to ask the board to, uh, to essentially authorize the signing of the review so we can put it in the file and we can meet our contract contractual obligation as stated inside the, uh, inside the contract between Sean and the town. This doesn't have those nice graphs you had. <laughs> it's, 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 in, uh, it's in the, uh, the presentation. Did you not? It's a, you had, yes, it's electronic. Yeah. I was way in the corner. I like that. You know, all by myself. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> an interesting exercise. Uh, I'll, I'll leave it at that. If it doesn't work, we can fix it the next time. Um, so on a, on a evaluation uh, perspective, some of the, the strengths that came out uh, through the forum and through the contributions of the board was that uh, the majority thought that Sean uh, had, has brought in a level of professionalism as additions of joining, um, that his ability to come in and establish mutual respect between the town manager and department heads uh, was certainly a positive. And uh, the implementation of uh, process and, and uh, unifying uh, the management team uh, was a highlighted strength. Um, also commented on was the, um, the change in, in morale and, and the ability to come in, Sean, as an outsider and, and develop some relationships with the staff, having a chance to speak with the staff, and, and again, collecting some of the commentary, not necessarily the form data, uh, people were, uh, were pretty responsive uh, to the time in here, and, and I think that shows a lot for your character as a, uh, as a person. Uh, a big highlight from a lot of folks was around the attention spent to community concerns. Uh, we'll talk about this in, in kind of the areas of, of development, uh, making sure that you know as you as you do entertain and address the community that uh, you always keep a thoughtful concern on priority level goes against other things that have to be done, which is a challenge. More, so just a general comment on that. Um, several comments came forth uh, regarding the capital improvement plan. Um, 
directly some of the comments from uh, you know people involved with the plan now and, and thinking that at least it's not Einstein's theory. It, it hasn't started off as Einstein's theory of insanity where we keep going through the same thing year over year. It seems like we've got a, a broader group now, a much more diverse group that we've had in years past, so that's uh, very much appreciated. Um, and your dedication to working with the different boards and agencies uh, has been noted and, and appreciated uh, within here. So those were some of the kind of consensus elements that came out. And I paraphrased comments from the different board members here to kind of summarize that. And then on the, the areas of improvement, um, I think that the biggest uh, area, and this should be no surprise to anyone at the table, that we collectively need to work on is, is figuring out what the right level of communication is back and forth uh, from updates uh, and for keeping each other in the know of, of things. And I think that, that swings on both sides. Um, and working through, you've recently been putting out the town manager report. You know, the question is, what are the important elements? How do we focus in on, you know, the signal from the noise? And I think there's a level of, you know, five different opinions on that, but we can do better at it. And I think we need to uh, share with you ways to kind of hone that in, and, and you need to uh, elicit some of that feedback from us equally as well. So we'd encourage you to do that. Uh, one of the things that um, we discussed and uh, discussed with others is, is trying to, sometimes we get at the stalemate where, you know, did you get that note from Sean? No, I'm not gonna ask him. Did you ask him? No, you know, I think one approach that we, we might benefit from is if we individually schedule one-on-one -on -one time, whether it's once a month to start or twice a month, enough to balance, you know, your, your schedule of things that you have to get done. And that just might break down some of the communication barrier. Um, and I know that in speaking with, with all the board, um, everyone would like to be better at it. And I think um, if we try just to, maybe it's a one-on-one, -on -one. if it doesn't work, then we, then we try something else. But we, we've got to kind of be creative in, in getting uh, a more open dialogue going between members and, and, and the town manager. Can I interrupt you sure. for a second sure. on that aspect? Of yeah. The problem with that is that you forget so if something comes out, gee, you know, I'd like to ask him, I'm talking about such and such a thing. Yeah. Uh, and the week goes by and I can't remember <laughs> what it was. Uh, so you, you sit down because we have this time set and hi, how are you? Good, good, everything okay, fine, good, yeah. <laughs> good, yeah. You know? So I'm not sure, maybe other people can remember look better at it than, <laughs> than, than me, but if I have, I'm an engineer, right. and generally people come to me because something isn't working, something is broken, they want it fixed. Mm -hmm. So, and I want to fix it right then. Mm -hmm. you know, so it's hard for me to get in this rope well and, and do this in, in that kind of a way. If I have a question, I like to have it answered right away and not wait for three, you know. Uh, no, and, and this is not, this is not uh, suggesting that we don't, you know, we queue everything up to those meetings. But I, I think some people have different relationships and dialogues with Sean. And, and um, you know, in, in some situations, uh, you know, if you're getting your questions seen, maybe you don't need the one-on-one -on -one to talk to him because we, we see him and we have no, no issues. But otherwise, if you have something structured, maybe it'll help kind of drive and make sure that dialogue happens because we all get wrapped up in, in different things. Right. So. It, it's, it's a recommendation uh, whether we, we follow it. It's, it's ultimately up to the board to, to schedule it with the town manager and the town manager to schedule it with the board. And you know, communication is a hard thing, right? A hard thing to measure whether it's really happening. So um, one of the other things that kind of came up um, with almost everyone that I talked to, and, and I think this is something we need to figure out, particularly as a board for, ne for when we switch up boards is this whole IT board onboarding process of, you know, and, and Tim, I think, happens to be the best of example of it because he hasn't been on, you know, the board very long and he hasn't, you know, Peter, you've been around for a couple of years, you know, off for a couple of years, but relatively around, which is, you know, how do we get someone like Tim or the next new guy understanding what are the systems, what are the passwords, how does everyone get on an email account? And you kind of walk in on day one, and, and I felt similar when I came on my first day. 
and for a while you're kind of flying blind because things may have changed or if you've never been on the board before you're just not sure where the information sources are and I know we've, we've discussed issues now with the finance uh, system that we're trying to get on but I, th I think what I would like to see us do as a board is is put together kind of our definition of you know, remember your first day on the job, what, what were the things you needed to do? Just like if you came in to work at any company, you kind of have this guideline of here's your password, here's your email account, you know, to the level that a lot of this stumbling around doesn't occur. But so. additionally, that's a job of a chairman. And new members come in, mm -hmm. the chairman sits down with them, you know, hi, you know, here's the bathroom, this is the, sure. you know, those things. But, but I don't think it's unique for every chairman. To me, this is something that, whether, Pete's chairman or the, the previous chairman or the previous chairman before that, there's a set of things that you need to, how do I get the financial information, how do I get online? And so I would like to to see you know us kind of take on and give the input back of things that you may remember because I've forgotten them. And, and let's just document it. So for the next chairman or two chairmen down, they can pick up the sheet and go, oh, gee, maybe I should really sit down with the guy and go over it. Because um, we assume it happens and, and it, it probably doesn't. Uh, another area of uh, improvement is um, uh, growing local, regional, and, and municipal networks. You know, and I think this is just uh, more of a, a comment that picked up as a relation to the, the amount of time in, in the job. So you've been here a year, you get a cast of uh, peers around you in the surrounding communities, and we have changeover uh, or re-election. Can I stop you sure. one second there, Jay? The one thing you have to remember is that Sean wasn't a town manager before, and it's not easy to come into a job where you haven't been that, been there before, and that's you know yeah, that's is, yeah. By all means, this is not a, 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 a this is just identified areas of where we think you yeah. know we can we can improve. You know, I I I can, I can do a better job of being a selectman. Oh, we all can, uh, I think. And I don't think we should avoid it just because of experience level. It's just one of the things that. Uh, I've heard people say I'd really like to see more of our rep, uh, their involvement, excuse me, their involvement in the community. And I think part of that's our relationship with the rest, but it's also part of the things as you as a professional in this role you need to embrace as well. So I, you know, I, I wouldn't take it as a criticism, just as something that was identified to work on. Um, the next big, big bucket, uh, came through a lot in the forums with the different members and came through with different dialogues with, uh, the, diff with the managers, which is, and this is a subjective interpretation of, of the data, but was, um, you know, we've, we kind of feel like the last year we've gotten to know the departments together, started getting the departments working together, and I think uh, the general consensus I got from those departments, they were very enthusiastic about that unity that they've kind of felt they had or found or refound uh, in the last year. And they were looking for both the BOS and the town manager to help them with long-term planning and strategy. So again, this it's your, it's your eval and your summary, but I think a lot of these comments touch both sides, which is how do we develop in conjunction a long-term plan for this town and where we wanna go? You know, and, and you hear things that Ed presented tonight, I think there's good hope for us maybe getting on track in one opportunity and identifying some long-term needs and some short-term needs, but we just need to follow through and continue to do that. And I think the feeling I got from uh, a lot of people in the community and people who work within Town Hall is they're ex they'd be excited to kind of pursue that and, and get into it and want to see that happen. <coughs> um, and then the other area from a form perspective specific to, to the BOS feedback is you know, continual growth in the budgeting process, which is, you know, I'll let Peter say it, I'm sure he'll say it later, um, talk about the, the, the how we do this as, as a, a board, how that gets communicated, our needs and priorities to you, how you take those needs and priorities and, and develop the budget and then communicate those back out to the stakeholders, which are the residents of the town. And if you looked at the form that we filled out, that was kind of the one area that we all said, you know, with the job, it's, that's the biggest area for growth, and I think you've called it out and recognized it in your own, in your own form. So uh, I think it's just a matter of saying it uh, within the group. But we all kind of felt like that's another thing that, that we just really need to get, get into and, and do a better job at. 
So those were the consensus items uh, on the positive uh, and on the areas of uh, improvement. And uh, I'll open it up to you if you have comments or, or questions or feedback that you want to share with the board at this time. No, I'm satisfied. You've talked about the communication. You know, the frustrating issue there is, you know, you're sitting there, if you're sitting waiting for me to come to you, and I'm sitting waiting for you to come to me, because I figure if you don't come to me, everything's fine. I mean, just about all of you walk in this, many of you walk in this room a couple of times a day. It's very rare that one of you sticks your head in and says hello. Now, the chair told me once, he just like was sorta, his, his impression, without ever, we, we hadn't had a conversation about this, his impression was that, well, he, 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 he thought he might be bothering me or I might be busy or whatever, right? And so then, of course, I was saying, I said, I'm here doing the job that you guys hired me to do, so if you ever wanna come in and just say hello, or if you want one-on-one -on -one time, it doesn't matter whether it was at during our schedule of time or not. If you happen to think of something, just because I'm not the type of person who's going to chase dad down, if you will, so to speak, and say, how's everything going? Like, if I need you, I, I feel like you hired me to do a job, and if I, uh, if, if, if I need your advice, I will seek you out. Um, obviously, I need to get stronger just about in terms of giving you sort of progress reports, right? But my view is that my, my, one of my jobs is to make your life easier. I'm supposed to take care of the stuff that I'm supposed to take care of so that you, you all don't have to. Um, so, uh, so for my part, I guess it just sort of, I mean, if I need to, you know, so if, if you come in and you happen to be talking to Tracy, you know, you feel welcome to take four extra steps into my office because um, I'm just in there working. Well, so. that, that's it. We, I think for myself, I'm always a little reluctant, unless it's something that I really want to know. You know, the man's working, let him work. You know? That's what I always say. Yeah. I didn't know. I have, and no, and I, on the one, I appreciate it. Yeah. But on the other hand, I have the ability to disengage and change stuff. You know, half the time it would be a sort of a welcome relief, to be quite honest with you. You know what I mean? I have no problem, to, you know, no issue with that. So I just, you know, I just think I just want to say I don't wouldn't want my that particular, that <clears throat> lack of one-on-one -on -one to be lack of de desire to speak or interact with anybody. It's just we're all sort of doing our thing. I figure if something's going on that I need to know or that you're happy or un more than likely unhappy with, right, you're gonna let me know, right? And so if I don't hear from you, then it's easy to sort of make the assumption hey, everything's fine. Now, by that same token, I'm not the kind of guy who's gonna sit and sort of shoot, shoot the breeze for good at it I'm not going to try to be good at it um, so so that's one of the things the other things that was mentioned is you know me getting out there and interacting more with folks that's something I have to you know my comfort zone isn't I'm not necessarily sitting sitting in the corner but I'm not this politician I'm not a politician I, I'm, I'm not and so um, so those are some of the areas where whatever I would sort of concede yeah if, if I need to sort of reach out a little bit more I'm happy to do so I just think it's one of my reasons for not doing so on the record. So, um, and obviously uh, the only other thing, you know, the, the, the big, big issue was the finances, I think. Um, I, I spend a lot of time just sometimes just reading municipal finance. It's like reading the encyclopedia or the <laughs> dictionary a lot of times, right? It's, it's kind of dull, out of context. It does, doesn't always mean something. I try and put it into context. Um, I've got a, um, you know, I have a good sort of experienced teacher and the finance, finance director, um, but I am sort of little by little trying to establish myself more in that fine financial realm. And I think one of the um, examples I would give, if you compared um, my role in November 2011 town meeting, the first town meeting I was here for, and then this past spring, if you compared those two, my, my role in that in the town meeting as far as the commentary that I delivered on the Warren articles and with this town meeting that we just had, I was much more involved, right? The first two town meetings, I was happy to let the finance director talk about those first six or seven, the standard fi financial ar articles. And this time I endeavored to sort of get up there and do my best <laughs> to try and, right, put the Warren article out there and yet and not, not, not just sort of read the standard commentary, but try and sort of translate it for folks. Um, and so that's, that's, I would just put that out there as that's sort of one of the ways that I'm 
when the efforts I'm trying trying to make to um, to make it to put more of the town manager's office stamp on the finances of the town, while all the while recognizing that we do have a fi finance director. Um, so who's who has a who has a particular area of expertise, and it would be a shame not to not to utilize that as well. So. Other than that, I appreciate the time of the board. Um, I would urge you, um, or I would recommend, or hope, I guess, in the future, maybe that more of you would um, attempt to speak to department heads. I think that the best way to get uh, to get so sort of a sense, at least, of the management portion, is to is to ask the people that I. You know, that I that, that I manage on a daily daily basis and I think if you were to um, sit down with those folks for a few minutes I think the biggest change that they feel is um, it, it sounds to me the, as, as though the the selectmen who talked to the department heads got legitimate um, uncensored if you will feedback and I know that that's something that's been a problem in the past because I think there there had there in the past there has been a climate or a fear that maybe there would be some sort of you know retribution or that 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 um, criticism wasn't always taken so kindly and one of the things that I've tried to tell my department head since I walked in the door was that if I don't hear the negative stuff or if the board doesn't hear the negative stuff to deliver to me I'm never gonna change it's never gonna change it's never gonna get to get any better and I would be a terrible leader or manager, Peter, to make the distinction, which I appreciate that article you gave me, by the way, um, if I didn't recognize that and make foster a climate where my where the where the people who answer to me feel as though they can be critical of me without w without feeling as though they're going to lose their jobs or suffer some other sort of you know penal penal penalty. And I think the only way you can really get a feel for that is to talk to them. So I would I would respectfully request I guess that you know the next time we do this in in March if you can schedule a few minutes with each of them um, certainly in a portion of the rubric it, it would it, it might be helpful in ter terms of you you know in answering your questions um, other than that it's been a pleasure right <laughs> so <laughs> I, 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 I want to keep on going right there's certainly no shortage of challenges um, and uh, Whatever, I'm, I'm not here to sit back and put, put my feet up. Um, so, you know, I appreciate the opportunity to get back in the uh, get back in the ring, or back on the horse, or whatever silly analogy. Back you in the saddle. Yeah, back in the saddle. Thanks, Steve. Yeah. So, that's all I have. All right. Um, any, anyone else on the board want to comment? Or? I just like to see the form redone. I didn't care for the whole form I just like I think we need to take some time before the next evaluation and go over this form so we can evaluate it a little better okay right, let's, let's can we just pause on that because we're going to talk sure. about that in a few seconds okay okay so, all right so for now I just want to get if there's no other commentary for the record I'd, I'd like to just vote to include the evaluation form copy of the charter charter excuse me <laughs> um, he is the yeah. including copy of the charter yeah, per, per his contract it asks for a copy of the charter to be included in the review with a the review copy of the charter to be in the review let me let me read it unless I'm I'm misinterpreting I think the wording is like that simply the board because shall part of the job description is yeah. it's the charter is incorporated. The board shall review and evaluate town manager performance annually prior to advancing to the fiscal year. Said review and evaluation shall incorporate, under the incorporate, include the town charter, which is incorporated here by yeah. reference. If I can suggest, I, because it, it, it probably says, here's the guidelines for which he Evaluate, job evaluate, is yeah. defined, and here's his evaluation to that. If I can su make a suggestion, we can stip I can just stipulate the, we just write in the date, the charter. For a charter. How do we put something in the charter? No, no, no we don't put we it don't in the charter. The charter. the charter, include the charter in his employee. The whole, whole charter itself, charter. with it. 
with with his his review based on a child. Oh, oh this he is child attached says. to it. Ten years down the road, you pick up. And say, how would how'd this guy do? You can see. Okay. All right, here's the rules. Okay. Supposed to do so what you're going to include in the thing Attachment. is is a the portion of the charter that makes reference to the duties of the town manager. Well, according to the contract, it says the whole charter, but. Just attach a charter to his evaluation. Now they can pull that charter on themselves if you do it that way. Yeah. That seems like it makes sense. Is there any for a motion? Yes, there is. I move that the board approve the review of the town manager for the period May 23rd, 2012 through November 30th, 2012. Second. Motion made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 So just the one last thing, and this is for the uh, kind of the next uh, next meeting. We can talk in detail, but I just want to kind of raise it now so we can start thinking about it. Uh, I'm going to ask that we kind of set the, the review period to be December 1st now through March 31st. That way, it gives about a month to kind of pull everything together in April and before the board changes, uh, have a chance to evaluate uh, or reevaluate uh, the town manager again with the same group of group of people. Um, Regarding the form, I, I struggled with it filling it out myself, um, and there's certainly areas of improvement. My only consideration for not changing it right now is it provides at least two consistent points to score it, so that if we go back to those charts that I put together in the presentation, if we had the same questions in, in the, the evaluation period, the questions stayed the same, at least we can get an honest sense maybe if the score moved and then I would recommend we make the changes if it turns out we're going to do these reviews on a, on a twice a year occurrence. But Bruce, I, I, I couldn't disagree with you uh, at all. There are questions that There's you questions that don't fit. And you know, the yeah, they don't, came they don't in, need to be there. But I didn't want to shake it completely up and then not give us a, a baseline for looking at improvement at the next review. But yeah. Think about that. We can talk about it at the next meeting Okay, uh, on that one. And then the other piece is, um, as part of looking at the contract, doing the review, and having a dialogue with, um, with Sean and thinking back of the previous town manager as well, within the contract, there is no continuity protection for the town, or the, or the town manager for that matter, in the way that um, uh, dismissal from, from the position or, or non-renewal, or him, him moving on. There's no like, you have to give us two months notice, you have to, make sure we have a transition period. And what happened with the last town manager, um, when we're, it was the three of us were on the board, was you know, you, we went in, we had, I think we had David as an interim from April, June, August. No, 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 I think Mike's contract was maybe the end of May, and he ended up being an interim while we did the entire search process. And um, in Sean's contract, he's entitled one month severance on separation, but there's no strings that we hold for, for stipulating he gets that severance. So we can't guarantee uh, or hold him to doing a smooth <coughs> transition, making sure that things are orderly and put a set of conditions on him getting that severance. So one of the things that I'm gonna ask the board to consider uh, for an upcoming meeting is, does it make sense to protect the town in putting in a time period that would allow us that if Sean is going to move on from the town, he has to notify us within a certain window uh, so that we can. That should be a policy and procedure. And it should be Which written up and signed. It, it, should, be put, and it should be put That's into right. the contract. But basically, we don't want to be left with a window of trying to find a town manager in a four month window and not having any heads up because he decides to walk out the door. Mm. Uh, so likewise, I, I think, you know, if we decide. Why do we have to have it for four months? Well, I'm just averaging what it took us last time to find okay. a town manager. But it's going to be okay. some period of time. It's yeah. going to be longer than a month. Okay. You know. And how are you going to enforce that? We'll withhold severance okay. until <laughs> we have those transition criteria met. Okay, you could, you could choose that. Or holding the sick leave on vacation time, too. Um, I don't know. If well, vacation was when. <laughs> sick leave. Yeah. 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 But, don't but get sick just, on separation anyways. Right. I don't get sick. So it just gives us a little more... <laughs> chance to transition <laughs> as opposed to just being left at the altar and, and yeah. scrambling. Um, so it's something to consider. You know, it's pretty... It's, it's very unusual for someone in, in his position to leave abruptly, you know, leave the employee in the lurch. It's 
because unless he's not going to work in any other place. Or change change career. Yeah, well, even even then, I don't care if it's career, yeah, you know. Unemployment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, right, so I don't think the, the risk is, is very great. One of the things that need to be changed in the town is the fact that we can appoint a, a interim manager for so many months, mm -hmm. and then we can remove that for three months. It's only one. Very, very bad. Right. I, I mean, any kind of language of that right. nature that ties the hands of our organization is because you're almost forced to hire somebody that you wouldn't ordinarily hire. For what purpose? Mm -hmm. you know? But anyway, um, nothing wrong with this. Yeah, you yeah just can uh, look at the contract. I'll circulate it. Think about the timelines. I, I suggest them out there. We can ask around and see what's what's common in the areas. But I, I have more of a professional opinion on it. Uh, I'm not a private sector person, and, and I don't have a lot of municipal data to kind of back up anything. So if you if you do have uh, some suggestions, uh, take a peek, and, and then I'd like to kind of take it up at the at the next meeting. Um, we can set the review period, make a decision on the form, and then you know talk. About because ideally, this if uh, we're not talking sep uh, necessarily termination, we're talking about separation by any means, whether it's he's leaving on his own or, or, or we decide or decide to let him go. Whatever the separation is, correct, is what he gets. Uh, correct. correct. Because what what had happened in, in logistically, what happens in practice? It's a town manager, not him. Yeah, it's correct. Yes, it's the same. A town manager. Yeah, it's, I appreciate it's, that. It's separate yeah. and independent from Sean. But what happened with? Um, with Mike during the period is the decision to move on Mike, we, we don't, you know, we made, we kind of had, I think we had the initial discussion around it in February, but his was different because he had contract renewal as opposed to a, mm -hmm. and, and we decided not to renew his contract as opposed to dismiss him. But that discussion had to fit on the clock of an existing board for the most part because we have a situation in the charter that after, uh, New members come in the first year. If they change over, they can't make a change. So I, I'm just trying to think about you know managing the clock better for everyone involved, so that there's it's not unpredictable. When That's why the language in the charter that says appointed for an indefinite term is advantageous mm -hmm. because you're not set to a particular time. Um, the you, when you hire somebody, you can put in there in the contract with the with the manager that it is the expectation that this will be a, you know, a long-term association. Mm -hmm. um, because I've been through a lot of these things, you know, and no board likes it. You know, it's, it's everything kind of stands still for a while mm -hmm. and it's, it's not a good process. Mm -hmm. So we'd avoid all that if you just have a contract that specifies the, you know, the, the duties and the work and the pay for a certain period of time and so forth. Uh, but it's but it's open ended, and you specify that it is the expectation and the hope of the board that the the manager will, you know, stay for an extended period of time. Mm -hmm. Although we can't, you know, they have all the slavery, so we can't <laughs> mandate that someone will stay for it. <laughs> right. Um, I, by the way, I can't find anything. It says that the board of selectmen shall provide for an annual review of the job performance of the town manager, which shall at least in summary form, be a public record. What are you reading the charter? Town manager, appointment, qualification, and term. It's, it's in the, it's in my it's appointment it's agreement. It's in the appointment oh, agreement. agreement. Not in the charter. Okay, <laughs> okay. we kept saying charter, charter. No, okay. no, I was saying the employment agreement calls to put a copy of the charter with, with the review. Oh, sorry. <laughs> the, <laughs> we'll get rid of that agreement <laughs> by mutual consent. <laughs> Mutual consent yeah. between the town manager yeah. and the board. That's right. Does that make sense? If you say so, we'll go along with it. Okay. If yeah. I don't say so, you can go along with it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll, I'll follow up with you guys anyways. I want to get your feedback on the process and make some recommendations on this. So last week, uh, or week before when we last met, we talked about having our representatives come in. So uh, 
Tracy drafted a letter. circulate out that just invites them down to talk about the new terms which are starting and uh, their plans and give us an opportunity to have a dialogue and discussion about some of the things that came up from shared computer programs at the state level to the things that came up today. Well, if, if this is what we're going to send him, right, it's going to be a work of retrospect. Okay. Because it's going to be a, you know, a show and tell. Okay. If we want to be productive, mm -hmm. the board needs to think about what it is we Question. would like yep. them to understand right. insofar as our frustration is going. Very specific things. And we need to get those things to 